This episode of Heroes of the Horn is brought to you by Sir David of House Betts. His blood on the rocks of Sheogul, washing away the shadow, sacrifice for man's salvation. Welcome to Heroes of the Horn, a Wheel of Time podcast. I am Sir Matt. And I am Sir Ezra. Welcome to our Wheel of Time book club. The horn has sounded, and we have answered the call. Today we are covering The Shadow Rising Part 2, Chapters 3 through 10, and in our Village Council we will be discussing Berylane Sur Peyendrag Peyron. That's a mouthful. I don't even know if I said it all the way entirely <laughs> correctly, uh, but uh, it, it is what it is. Barreling. All right, we're gonna be talking about Barreling. Ta- hey, we're we're talking we're talking about Barreling. Yeah, as wow. Um, uh, we're a little late in our in our posting, but that's okay because as uh, was a guest on the Dusty Wheel, another Wheel of Time uh, show. It's pretty big on YouTube. You guys were talking all kinds of things. Uh, yeah, that, that was uh, that was a lot of fun. So uh, Matt Hatch is the host over there, uh, the Dusty Wheel fantastic you know i i I don't know if people some people don't know this right but like innkeeper hatch is actually a character in the stories later on people say oh you just spoiled it for no no, it's not spoiled he's a a minor character isn't he minor character the old innkeeper and uh when brandon sanderson kind of uh took over the writing later in the series um matt hatch was i think i think he got copies of the book and was one of those sort of beta readers and uh ran theory land for a while and so back in the day, any, any wheel of time stuff that I looked up was, uh, was dragon mount at the time, but then also he's been doing this live call in wheel of time talk show for a long time. And I actually told him, I said, Hey, I used to, you know, just, if you wanted wheel of time news and discussion and you wanted to hear how things should be properly pronounced, uh, you went to Matt Hatch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it was pretty cool. It was, it was actually pretty neat. And he's been, um, you know, working on this show for a long time and I, uh, he's close to 10,000 subscribers. So you know, if you're one of our listeners and you haven't heard of um, the Dusty Wheel, I think you should. I think you should go over there and check it out. But yeah, we did a collaboration. Uh, I was on there with um, several uh, awesome other YouTube creators and podcasters and things. So I'll put a link down in the description for folks. But yeah, kind of took a a week off there to do that collaboration. There was uh, we were talking about the audio teaser trailer was was the big thing mm-hmm. actually. So. Yeah, yeah we're, which we're uh, which we did we did we did two YouTube videos on that. It's pretty cool. Um, just another little tease. We uh, you can check out those YouTube videos on our YouTube page, which is uh, you know YouTube Heroes of the Horn. Yep. will come right up. Um, yeah, little little teaser. Uh, kind of cool. Get to see the I said I logo. Um, get to hear two people kind of talking. Are you ready? No, me either. Seems like it's Perrin and Egwene. So a lot of speculation over there on our YouTube channel. Go check it out. And uh, hey, if you like it, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. So yeah, because yeah. you know what? You guys are here first. OK, the show is not out yet. And when the show comes out, it's going to, you know, right. We and we want you guys to be there with us as heroes of the horn. Because your guys' theories and stuff like that will be when all these peop- thousands of people who don't even know the show exists come and f- check us out. It'll be your guys' theories and stuff like that that we're reading. So uh, we appreciate it. And uh, yeah, yeah, do yeah. us a favor. Hit that sub button on YouTube if uh, yeah. you want some more uh, more content. So uh, yeah, so pretty cool. And we'll, st- we'll keep you guys posted as soon as we get any more news. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was a lot of fun. And for sure, we're going to be keeping uh, everyone updated on the... Uh, the, the show, or at least commentating, I guess, on on that. And if you're a listener here at Heroes of the Horn, as Sir Matt said, yeah, we want you guys to um, get in that. We always have a discussion kind of post on Patreon that's free. Anyone can go check it out and comment on there. Most recently, Heather Reed and uh, Jonathan Reese were, were in there. And shout out to them. I even said, drop your Twitter handles because I'm going to start dropping some of our patrons, uh, you know, Twitter handles. There's Twitter on um, hashtag Twitter of time. Is kind of a big deal right now in the Wheel of Time community, and I want people who are with us, who are listening, to to be promoted. I mean, they, they have great thoughts, uh, theories, you know, just kind of uh, little interesting tidbits. You know, Matt and I often say we don't have a chance on this show 
uh, because of the pacing that we're currently under to go over every little detail and and talk about sort of you know some of the finer points and if there is one of those finer points that we that we do miss we love I love uh, getting kind of some follow-up from folks and saying hey could you talk more about this or what did Sir Matt think about that and that's that's sort of the big thing is the experience of like what you know when these new characters show up I mentioned Bear Lane, for example now Bear Lane was technically in the the Dragon Reborn there just slightly in, in, in the last um, book. But, I mean, you know, it's a character where it's, like, it's kind of shocking. Like, who is this person and, and what is, you know, her her whole deal and what is what is Sir Matt's reaction to that? So that's kind of kind of where we're at uh, on that. So, yeah, be, be sure to, you know, subscribe over there and, and check that out. Uh, Sir Matt, what did you – so I was on the Dusty Wheel and I was talking, you know, with those guys about some of the thoughts and theories and, and what have you. Did you have any – the, the big prevailing thought and idea was that um, that this was going to be winter night, that that the audio that we were getting yeah. was winter night, uh, an escape or shot our log off, whatever it might be. Yeah. yeah, you and I were trying to figure it out. Um, and and so that's kind of where I was as we were thinking it's either it's, if it's Perrin and Egwene kind of running off, I think I'm a little maybe a little more on shot our log off, right? Just because it's like. We know that they end up going off. They when everybody splits up, they they end up splitting up with them, or they are a group. They're one of the groups that get us up. Then they run into the tinkers, and we get on that route. So, I mean, that's where I'm gonna I'm gonna place it at, um, because in the book, in the sh- in, well, in the books, um, and possibly in the show, um, it's re- you really are getting mostly Rand's perspective of you know, Beltine and, and Winter's Night and stuff like that, right? Where Rand is, Rand's with Tam and when we're kind of, that's kind of the focus. Um, now they may end up expanding that in the show and showing us every, a lot of everybody else's perspective of what's going on. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if we will or not just because it's going to be, um, that's probably, that, I mean, that's probably episode one. Right. So I think I think it's going to be I think it's going to be very I think it's going to probably go pretty similar to the book that it's going to be Rand's Rand and Tam's perspective, especially because we won't see Tam again. Right. You know, for who knows how long. Um, So, you know, you have that actor there for probably one episode. So, I mean, you know, you're I I, I, my my guess is that it's it's Shadar Logoth when they all get split up. Well, and, and okay, so the a- after Shatter Logoth, right? I mean, it's it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. after they all leave, and then the yeah, yeah, yeah. Mashadar is is kind of right. swooping through, and maybe maybe it splits them up, and they're doing, you know, God knows what. One of the things I mean, I I wasn't really sold on this I, during that show. Um, we were trying to come up with like four possible options. I think we, it was five because I think Matt also pitched one uh, as well out there for folks to vote on. Like, which do you think we had? Rafe Judkins, basically, there was a competition where he said, hey, if you guys get this right, if somebody gets this right um, and can tell me exactly where or what is happening or what, you know, when Egwene asked Perrin, are you ready? You know, the question is, for what? You know, what are you ready for? And if someone could get that right, he was going to fly them out, have dinner in Prague the whole nine yards next season, next year when they're, when they're shooting this and uh, when things are working out. He thought to himself, there's no way anyone's going to get anywhere close to this. Not even, there's no chance. And he gave him a two-hour window to see what would happen. I think within the first hour, hour and a half, he posted in there again and he said, wow, I'm sweating because someone came within one word of getting this right. And he was like, I'll see you later if I can put some official competition together. So then folks were like, holy smokes, we have 600 comments here. And I didn't actually get a chance to see, you know, where that timestamp fell as to which of the 600 comments was he talking about? Like, did that happen? You know, because this is, this is how this is how nerdy I, I thought that conversation with with Matt Hatch was in that, like, you're almost figuring out which of the 200 or 300 or 600, all of them comments was Rafe talking about. So it was nuts because we had this doc and and Matt was going through it. Um and I think Lauren, yeah, Lauren and, and some of the others were in there early, kind of going through sifting out some of these uh, other options. Like it, it's probably not this, um, or it, it really it can't be this. And you're trying to narrow it down. It was something he says it doesn't happen in the books. Like it's a scene, but yet it, it is it's a detail that is left out of the books. Was the clue that kind of Rafe you know gave. And so everyone was guessing Winter Night. 
Uh, Shadar Logoth was out there, and I kept saying, all right, when it comes down to the final, like, you got to pick something. I didn't want all of us kind of picking just Winter Night. You know what I mean? Like, because you had to vote. We were giving kind of, like, listeners and viewers on on the Dusty Wheel a chance to kind of vote on these different options. So I said I found one where someone had kind of guessed that it's Egwene using possibly the one power and maybe casting some water um, at either Trollocs or someone else as they fall into the river. And one of the problems was is that, like, you know, people were like, well, they didn't jump into that river. They kind of fell into it. So people, people were getting really technical about like that one word. I'm like, well, maybe it is just that they fell in the, they, they fell in the water, but yet, you know, the power was used because to me, the visual that went along with the audio clip, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, and it, it was a representation of the power, um, Saeedine and Saeedar right there, right in front of us. We get to kind of see that. And I was like, ah, oh, this, this is, this is sick. So to me, I thought the, it had to be somewhat related to the power, but most likely it was probably winter night. It's probably what it was. It's some element of winter night that we didn't see and or we didn't encounter in the books because we were following Rand's story and that's that's most likely what it is. So I just want folks to know that is why I chose something other than winter night, simply because we had so many winter night options. I was like, I gotta be a little bit different here and try try something else. So if you're over there checking that out or you if you did vote and you wondered why the heck did Sir Ezra pick what he picked that that's one of the reasons why so but it, it was fun it was interesting and I think yeah it's there's a still anybody's guess I guess I haven't seen any updates from Ray for anyone kind of talking about whether or not um you know no 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 further clues which is fine which is great yeah okay uh all right as should we move on over to our village council yeah, for sure. Uh, Village Council today. So um, talking about Barrel Lane, and I guess as I kind of pull up, I'm um, going to look up the, by the way, if you haven't had a chance to follow any of like Tarvalin Library or the Wheel of Time fandom kind of wiki, there's other wiki pages that are being created out there. Uh, really good resources for for folks who want to, you know, dive into some of these um, characters or, or smaller, um, you know, details of the series. It's a massive series. I was telling Matt just today, I said, uh, there are trilogies within trilogies within trilogies in this. There are numerous trilogies in this series, and it's it's a lot. But uh, yeah, as I pulled it up, so what are your big takeaways, I guess, from like Bear Lane and just your first introduction and seeing you know who Bear Lane is in this series? I mean, she's she's something. She's stunning. Uh, she is. She is stunning. Um, yeah. Uh, obviously, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more when we get to the chapters and uh, just going into Rand's room, right? And uh, so that's obviously causing some some issues with uh, Egwene and uh, Elaine, even um, even even more. And then you know we also see um, Rand. Yeah, he gets a little upset, right? He gets he's easily he's, he's a he's a little testy. So. Um, you know, we're just kind of being uh, introduced to her, really, um, and so I think you know we're it's going to expand a little bit further. Yeah. Kind of gray area, you know. I can't really, you can't really tell her motives right now. Is she good? Is she bad? I mean, she just in it for herself, so um, it's going to be just another kind of dynamic to throw into uh, the the our characters. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think she's uh, she's definitely someone who, when you first come across her. She just jumps out at you as having a lot of energy and um, just just really being she is she's regal, but yet she is using sort of her appearance and her energy and her spirit the same way as she she, she says this at one point that the same way a man would use a sword. So what what she is kind of um, and let me just read, I guess, to you guys some of her description real quick. So she's beautiful. She's tall. She's a pale woman with long black uh, hair that falls to her shoulders. She has large, dark eyes. Um, she often wears really, you know, I mean, she, she has beautiful dresses. And, and again, she is, you know, here are her titles, right? So, Blessed of the Light, Defender of the Waves, High Seat of House Peyron, and the First of Mayen. And so, Mayen is also this kind of city-state. And it, um, right now, she's being held in, in the series where, where we're at, we're in the Shadow Rising, she is being held by the High Lords of Tyr. Uh, she is a, quote, guest there. And she's been defiantly kind of, um, well, it was, it's sort of implied that she is there for some negotiations and that she's there to protect um, her city-state, Mayen. And um, her title is she's the first, so she's the leader there for, for their people. But mm -hmm. uh, 
she, she's trying to almost like negotiate sort of, I don't know whether it's a piece or some terms. Like she doesn't want conflict there. She knows that Tyr is vastly um, more powerful, larger, has a bigger force, all of that. And so she's there using whatever she has to kind of protect her city state and her people. And that's, I guess, one of the biggest things I want to remind folks when you think of Berylaine, like that is where a lot of her motives until the Taviran, you know, mystical stuff, you know, happens and three Taviran walk into tear and then things are just all going haywire. But initially that is her goal. That's her drive is she is there to protect her people. So uh, interestingly enough, uh, so it's men and Egwene at one point, well, I'm not sure if Egwene has happened. Yeah, yeah, no, it has. It's It was in, uh, in in the dream world. Egwene has this vision. She sees Perrin with a falcon and a hawk on either shoulder. So when she first walks in, there's all this symbolism surrounding her as possibly this hawk. You know what I mean? This other um, individual who, who, and we find out right where we are in the Shadow Rising, it's made very clear to us that she is the hawk that men and Egwene have seen in their visions surrounding Perrin. So, Fael is there representing the Falcon member for a long time. We weren't really sure who or what the Falcon would be in Perrin's life as we're moving through the series. Now we have, and there was also a Hawk. We hadn't met the Hawk yet. And so, although it might not be, you know, that explicit, I mean, it's, you know, she is, she encounters Fael. They have a run-in, and um, it's not good. At one point, Egwene sees the Hawk and the Falcon fighting. And we actually see that right at the beginning of the Shadow Rising. So um, that's all I'll really say on that, just for for Matt's sake, uh, in in terms of like you know where we are in the reread. But uh, she's definitely significant to kind of you know Perrin's arc, clearly, just because the symbol of the hawk has been seen around uh, Perrin, and, and we know um, yeah that's going to be important. So, anyways, um, but yeah, she she is a strong strong character. She's she's really cool. I think a lot of people really 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 like her. She's one of the favorites in the series. And uh, here's some history on her quickly. She was born in uh, she was in, born in 974. Her mother died when she was nine. Uh, she loved her father. He also kind of returned a lot of this affection that she kind of needed or sought. Uh, at the age of ten is sort of when she becomes first of Mayen. And, um, you know, so that's interesting. At a young age, she's been working for her people for a long time, for a long time. Um, and then just a little bit more, uh, kind of goes over some of her mannerisms and her relationship with, like, going back and forth to Tyr and understanding uh, Tyr and, and being raised there. She does claim descendancy from Ardor Hawkwing, which is interesting. So we'll keep that in mind as we move through the series. But she's just a really unique, interesting uh, leader, and she comes from such a small nation. You know what I mean? It's such a mm-hmm. small little nation that you're like, what? What's what's the deal? And there is more on on basically the price of oil and negotiating. You know, one of the 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 previous first kind of did some negotiation with Tier in regards to Tier Angrial, which we're going to encounter. We haven't got there yet with Sir Matt, but um, it's it's interesting the relationship that Tier has with uh, with with Mayen. Uh, it, it, it it it's really kind of odd. It's um, it shows us more about their economy and trade and how trade can influence some of those, you know, relationships between nations. So Yeah, and, and Mayen is, I have the map, just because I have the map pulled up here in front of me. Um, it is directly, it's pretty much the next town or city, whatever, um, over to the east. So it, it is actually pretty close because sometimes we look, sometimes I, I always have to pull the map up uh, yeah. to look at some of these things because I'm always like, wait, where are we at again? And I got to look and see like, you know, why are we dealing with people who are like way on the other side of the like? How does this all work? So, um, yeah. So Tyr and Mayen are they're like pretty much next door neighbors. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And do you see kind of um, how I guess like almost like like small it is? It's it's mm-hmm. kind of a smaller, yeah, it's pretty small. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. What is it's something to kind of uh, keep an eye on that city state, its influence in this region, and its leader. Uh, Bear Lane, and, and and really to see kind of what she's... So, I mean, she walks right into the Dragon Reborn's chambers and tries to seduce him. That's flat yeah. out what she tries to do. And her motivation to do that is not because she somehow really... I mean, whatever, Rand's good-looking guy, powerful, whatever. But, like, she, it, like the, I go back to the idea that she is using 
her position of power, she knows how vulnerable her small city state is. And so to protect it, she's using what she has and what she knows and what she knows will work to, to, to save her people and to keep them out of harm's way or from them being occupied by, by tear, quite frankly. So if that means that she has to walk in and try to seduce the dragon reborn, that's what she's going to do. And I, it seems crazy, but that legitimately is what happens in this story. So, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it is what ticks off the rest of the girls actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. As let's, uh, let's move on over to our, uh, our read through here. Uh, I'm going to plow through these chapter discussions. So, um, we are at, uh, chapter three. So just, I guess kind of maybe a quick little recap here. Cause we did chapters one and two. Uh, Min goes in, in, in chapter one last, last time Min went to the, uh, she went to, she went to the Armorland seat and she's going to go by her full name. She's kind of in disguise. That's kind of what's going on to her. And then we're just catching up with Rand and everybody in the, in tier, uh, kind of after the fallout of the last book, uh, Rand now has Kalendor, uh, and we're kind of, um, going from there really. And as you was talking about, of, uh, Bear Lane and, and Mayan, she just tried to seduce rand and that's really uh where we're where we're kind of at here so uh today we're covering chapters three through chapter 10 chapter three reflection um uh which uh oh i guess they, they don't have short summaries on this one here so uh chapter three reflection uh chapter four strings chapter five questioners chapter six doorways chapter seven playing with fire Chapter eight, hard heads, chapter nine, decisions, and chapter ten, where things get real serious, the stone stands. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, my friend. So I I was joking with you. I said we are in tier for quite a, a long time, aren't we? Mm-hmm. We just don't leave. Yeah, this started uh for me roughly the same. So actually there's there's a things a few things I've noticed now that we're into our fourth book. Um, one of the things I really like, and I've, I think I've said this before, is that Robert Jordan does, I think does a really good job of kind of explaining a little bit as soon as, as soon as you see a character and, and they're talking about what they're doing, he'll kind of give you a quick little, maybe like one to two sentence summary of like where they've come from. So if you were, if you would happen to just pick this book up, you would not be left off. So I, I do like that. And I've noticed that most of the chapters, most of the books with, um, really it's like right around chapter 10 is when it's like all right now we're ready to go it's like chapters one through 10 are like all right we're gonna stage it we're gonna get every who's what's going on with matt what's going on with Perrin? what's going on with rand everybody and then chapter 10 it's like something happens and then all right now now we're gonna go yeah yeah you're right i mean because yeah we're starting kind of a new arc and so uh we need some time to kind of game plan um set up for these these new arcs and these these this new story so yeah, that's really kind of what it feels like we're doing here, and we're we're learning more about um, what it means to be the dragon, what it means to be in tier, and and, and all that, that. That's the other thing too is that when we bounce these other places, and you're in in a whole new location, you have to kind of learn, like get the lay of the land a little bit, right? Because we just abruptly marched in here, took Calendor, did our thing, and we don't really know much about tier. At this point. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's in these first 10 chapters that we do learn more about the politics through Tom. We learn about the High Lords, um, the gaming, uh, Barrelane, and, and what's going on between, her, you know, the first of Mayenne and, and Tyr and all of that. Um, Ilion is also a big deal to, to, to the Tyrants. And so uh, we, we need time, I guess, to digest it, which is good. You, you kind of said to me also that, like, Robert Jordan, um, I think what you were just saying is that, like, he takes time to go back and explain stuff and really help set us up. You know what I mean? And that's maybe why the series feels so long sometimes, and it might be even a criticism uh, for some folks, but I like a good reminder in a series that's this thick. So it's just me. But No, oh, no, yeah, absolutely. So, um, well, let's go to uh, chapter three. Um, some of these, I'm going to be honest, some of these chapters, not really a lot happens. Uh, it's really kind of towards the back half of this, of this block for this week. Um, uh, that we're going to talk like chapter three is really just kind of like bear lanes explaining, Hey, this is what happened with Rand. Perrin is talking about, you know, the member, remember if you remember last time, um, 
you get you get Perrin's perspective and Matt's perspective of like stuff going on, like things are kind of acting up uh, in tier, and a lot of it has to do with Ran being there and kind of using the power. Remember with, um, you know, you know, Perrin wants to go confront Ran about the axe, right? Remember there was the axe that like was that mm-hmm. he had to stop because it almost killed yeah. Fael. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So so you you kind of have that. Um, Perrin is, uh, he, as, as, as he's going, um, you know, he comes across, uh, Torian, uh, as his guards, um, and then he kind of has a few parties with them. Torian leaves, then Bear Lane, this is when Bear Lane appears, um, and so she's, like, running away from Rand's room. So, yeah, you get a lot of this kind of, like, you see one event happen, and then you get to see how all these other parties kind of experience that same uh, event happening, which is something I notice I feel is different uh, in this book than it has kind of been in other books, but maybe it's just because he's, as we are going to spider web out, right, into all of these different characters, that's where we're going to be. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, it, it's... Uh, <laughs> I, I I don't know how to, how, uh, how, to, how, to how to put this. Um <laughs> It, it, this is almost like it, what's what's wild is you have kind of a storm going on in tier right now, right? And it seems like there's something we're building towards something, decisions, things we have to do. Um, but and, and to me, because I was asking, I was like, oh yeah, because I'm at the end of this book and in my reread, and I I'd gotten to the end of it, and so to think back to the beginning, I'm like, where did you leave off at? I was asking Sir Matt, and he's like, chapter ten. That's where we're at, up through chapter ten. And I thought, dang, like that is actually almost the calm before the storm. Because some crazy stuff, we're about to literally just jump off and go in, in, in so many different directions. And so for this part, there is still so much that happens here. And there, it, there's a big, um, all the characters are involved in, in, these, in these decisions. You have mention of the Forsaken. You have um, the political scheming. Moraine still trying to control things. All of a sudden, we're bringing up stuff like, like the, um, the Tyr on Grial, And that's going to happen later. We'll talk more about that in a second. But yeah, I, it's... There's, there's just a lot happening here at the beginning, but yet there's, in comparison to the rest of the book, I would just tell you. There's not. There's not, which is crazy to me, because I'm like, oh my God, there is, like, when, when you first start reading, you're like, wow, okay. And I, and it's, I, you know, you're right in that this is pretty straightforward. You know, parent, parent is walking, he's going to go, you know, confront Rand about all of this. Also, do you, did you not think it's kind of interesting that everyone's sort of leaving Rand alone? Now mm-hmm. that he has Kalendor, it's, a, it's again sort of a weird, like, uh, do we go see the Lord Dragon or do we not? You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, like, and it's, it's it is weird field. how it, it yeah it is weird how everyone however it interacts with them because that's there's really two things going on in this block of chapters. One, you have everybody being like, all right, we'll kind of check up on Rand and then we got to go do our own stuff. And everyone's mm-hmm. kind of doing their own thing now. Everyone's like independent, right? Is 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 kind of the thing because if you go to chapter four, the next chapter, it's really just. Tom's in his room hanging out and Matt comes in and says, well, all this crazy stuff happened and uh, maybe we yeah. should, we should leave. Uh, I mean, you know, like maybe, 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 maybe we should leave. They said, well, let's, let's hang out a little bit more. I mean, that's literally the chapter. It's literally, it's literally pretty straightforward. And then Perrin wants to leave and he's trying to get away from Fahil. Um, So there's, you know, there's Perrin and Fahil are kind of doing this like, I don't know. They're they're gonna hang out. They're gonna not. You know, parents kind of brushing her <laughs> off, but it's you know kind of a thing. So really, um, it's about chapter five when some things kind of um, pick up, right? So now we come back to Egwene uh, and Avienda and Nynaeve, and this is when um, th- this this is when uh, we start to get the idea that hey, maybe we should go talk to Rand. Right. And 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 see what's and see what's going on. See what's going on with him. Right. And remember, they're still searching for the Black Aja. Right. That's kind of what's going. That's kind of uh, what's going on with them. Right. So uh, you have and Egwene is now like Avienda has now become part of the party, too. Right. And then the Maidens of the Spear, they're all there, too. So um, you, you have Nynaeve and them and they're all kind of talking. Um, Egwene kind of wants answers uh, for like. With Rand, like what's you know, she's even wondering, you know, what's what's going on with Rand. Um, you know, you have Joya and Amiko, you know, the two black sisters. They're being held captive in a room. They're bound by air. Um, and then you know, you, the Joya can't touch the source because there's kind of like a shield stopping her. Yeah. Right. And Amiko has been stilled. So they've kind of yep. got these people. They've kind of got these people held held hostage. 
Yeah, what do you think about that? I mean, the, the what they can do with the power and and like the you know to steal someone or to to shield them. That seems like kind of an interesting. Do you remember how the girls were kind of um oh gosh, e- even when they themselves were shielded in the Dragon Reborn. We didn't get a chance to talk much about that. That's like a dangerous thing, man. You know that like if you're shielded, you are shielded. Like if they, it's almost like they they got the drop on you and they put a shield around you and you can't get out of it. So unless they let you out of it, you are trapped. Um, and we know with Egwene sort of like the Adam being something that, that bound her that she could not get away from, we know she really struggled with that in The Dragon Reborn at the end there. Like, this is not going to happen to me again. This cannot happen. They're, they're kind of using the power to beat against that shield. And now we see the Black Sisters are shielded here as well. And, um, you know, it's, 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 stop, it's stopping them from touching the source. So it's like they can still uh, like attempt to, and they know how to try to draw on it, but there is a barrier between them and it, and they can't really get to it. But it's, um, it's, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I, I kind of wonder what your, what your thoughts are on. on yeah. I that. mean, it's, it's, a, it's again, it, uh, you know, you and I talked about this, how people kind of level up off screen, right. Kind of a yeah. thing. Uh, there's, there's definitely a lot of that going on, uh, which is cool. Cause then it speeds, it speeds the story along. I mean, it's already a 15 book series, right? So we definitely need to, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, get, uh, get, get some of that, but yeah. Um, man, it just makes me think that I just don't trust the ice to die. Okay, that they have this power to kind of stop people. And it causes me to think that at some point we're going to see somebody like, and maybe we'll talk about that person uh, towards the end, uh, about chapter 10, when we kind of get a big, big reveal. Um, Mm -hmm. Could that person be shielded? I don't know. I don't know if little novices, Egwene and Nynaeve and, um, and uh, how am I blanking on, how am I blanking on her name? Elaine, yes, thank yeah. you. Uh, and Elaine, who even though they even though they say they're real Aes Sedai, you know they're pretending to be. I don't know that they could potentially stop anyone and everyone with that. So I don't know if it is a power that they can just use. You know, if it's if it's like, uh, can somebody break out of it? I would probably think so. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. I mean, because it seems like they're beating against it, right? That's that's the big thing. Is that Egwene when she you know like just them being imprisoned and being, I mean, she had to go to Teleron Riyadh to kind of like, you know, try and, and make something happen there for them. But, um, yeah, these black sisters are, are flat out shielded. And it's, uh, it, I mean, it's, it seems like it's something that you, you don't want to have happen at that point. You, they can do whatever they want and, and you're, you're stuck. So I said, I just think it's kind of neat. You know what I mean? Like you have all this power, but then, if you're able to, if you get the drop on somebody, it's almost like handcuffs, right? You, you've got them cuffed. Well, now they're, you know, really hampered. Um, more that it's not just handcuffs. It's also like you've, you're chained up. I mean, you cannot do anything. It's not just binding them with the with air, right? So, like, if you just bound someone with air, they could fight you off and try to, you know, undo your weaves and move your weaves between them and all, you know, counterattack the whole thing. But if you get the surprise attack drop on somebody, you can you can shield them. And I'm just like, man, watch out for that. That's that that's just that secrecy getting the drop on somebody that's kind of scary for all the characters, um, especially when you start to walk in Forsaken. You know, like holy smokes, they can do things that we can't even that that our our main cast can't even imagine. And and really, even more rain, we don't really know exactly, yeah, what all of our uh, you know, even the Amarlin and Moraine, like w- what what all they can do. They keep kind of surprising us with some of their knowledge, and uh, we saw Balefire and things like that. But uh, yeah, it's interesting, I guess, just to think about how we're going to learn about these these powers and and how you fight with the one power. Because I'm thinking about it in the show. You know, I'm thinking like, what's that going to look like to be shielded, and are we going to see the weaves, and wouldn't that be important for the viewer to kind of see those things? And I just think it's it's interesting. Um. So is it, is it, it's, I guess my, I guess, why would you simply, I mean, how do you gentle somebody? Is it, is it, if you're gentled, you're like, you're, you can no longer use the power. Yeah. Yeah. They, they basically have, uh, severed your, your, your connection to the one power. Um, So like, it's what they did to Logan. Right. 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 It's what they do to men who can channel. It's, 
So when Logan shows up in Camelin, he is shielded. And by the way, uh, shout out to Lady Heather for that awesome. She sent me this uh, kind of fan teaser trailer thing. I'll put a link down to it in the bottom. Somebody did some artwork on Logan being taken into Camelin. And let me tell you, it is sick. If we get to see that kind of stuff in the show, like him surrounded by red sisters, bro, I'm going to tell you right now, I mean, there's some stuff like it's, it's, it's a, yeah, it's an interesting thing, right? Because he's shielded by the red sisters and some of them, I think the way they make it, and I don't really know all of the actual ins and outs of how many people it takes to hold a shield and can do it. Is it numerous people? Once it's once someone is shielded, you can see uh, they were talking in the, at the end of the Dragon Reborn about tying it off, tying weaves off and leaving weaves there. Uh, and you see different like things where the Omerlin is doing that in her study with stuff. So uh, there, there's little tiny details like that. But yes, they have basically at that point in time, they're shielding him. When they get him to the White, the white Tower, um, they have stilled him. And right. let me, I guess so that's let, different. let me look it up. Yeah. Right. Since, so that's, since we've that's talked about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely different. It's definitely different. I believe it takes a certain number of them to do it. Let me just okay. confirm that. But um, and then, like, once you're gentled, you can't get it back. Um, uh, that's a great question. <laughs> that's, a good question. <laughs> that's a good question. I don't know. Uh, we're gonna have to read and find out. Um, okay. Well, that yeah. So, that. so, so severing. Let me see. Yeah, is an archaic uh, gender neutral term. That was the, that's what they called it back in the Age of Legends, you know, severing or whatever. In the new era, the term stilling is applied, you know, to women, gentling for a man. So a woman is stilled and a man is gentled. So I kept, sorry, I, I, I interchanged those uh, moments ago there with low gain, but a man is gentled. You know, that, that word, um, you know, well, it kind of fits. It's fitting for men and it's also, it's meant to be kind of this, both of them carry a less harsh um, connotation. You know, both of those words, the, the emotions and feelings surrounding those words are a little less uh, harsh and because what they're doing is, 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 is bad. Um, uh, they also say that you can be burned out, right? That can, that can occur by accident. Remember when the girls are first being trained, it's sort of the idea that uh, be careful how much of this you power you take in. You, if you take in too much, you could burn yourself out. And uh, that could that could sever you from the one power. So, yeah, I'm trying to see okay. here. And so, I'm sure someone's screaming at me right now, saying like, "Yeah, there's a certain um, thing number of people." I was I thought there was a certain uh, okay. Like, so, like but procedure. so so okay. So clearly, they couldn't just gentle them. Like Egwene it's a process. Yeah, I mean that that's yeah. the thing. I th it, it is definitely a, a a process. Otherwise, they. I mean, they can't if they. I guess if they have the numbers, they they can do it on the spot. But typically, they take them back, and there's a formal trial trial at, at the White Tower, trying to there's tower law and all that all that kind of stuff. So, um, because th that is the thing, there are some men who have been gentled without a trial, and that's like the big that's like a big deal. It's it's almost like crimes of the White Tower. Yeah, yeah that isn't. Hey, yeah, well, we're gonna, we're gonna hey, get in. We're gonna get into the White yeah. Tower here. Um, yes. But let, well, let's let's well let's finish up this this chapter yeah. a little bit here. So we're on, we're on we're on chapter five. Um, uh, right. So we've got we've got the, we've got the shield stopping Joya from touching the source. Right. Um, so you have you have that going on. Uh, Amiko said that they should go to Tanchico. That there was something very dangerous to Rand there. Uh, not a word had changed from what she had said during previous questionings. As they're you know they're questioning her, she's bound again, right? And then Joy is unbound. So then she begins a speech on she was you know she was trying to repent her sins, right? But Egwene does not believe any of it. She commands Joya to tell her uh, tell her tale, but using different words. Uh, the sister complies and says that the Black Aja intend to break um, Mazram Taim, who is traveling to the tower to be gentled free, proclaiming him the Dragon Reborn, and give his name as Randall Thor to make him destroy the world a great deal. Pretty uh, serious yeah. stuff. <laughs> right, yeah. So basically trying to give out some of the secrets uh, of, of the Black Aja. You know, the thing is, is, is like, can you trust some, what they're saying? And that's the that's the struggle that I believe um, 
Egwene, Nynaeve, and Elaine are kind of having. This is their task to to seek out the rest of the Black Aja, hunt them down, figure out what's going on. And then, yeah, there's something uh, in Tanchico that could hurt Ran uh, that they're that they're they, they that the Black Aja is trying to acquire, and also they're trying to mess up these plans. Um, Mazram Taim, they're trying to maybe seemingly break out and proclaim him to be the dragon to cause confusion and to and to maybe uh, throw. Whatever the White Tower has planned for Rand, they're trying to throw that off by uh, bringing forward another false dragon, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah, so basically, then you, you can spread fear and dissent across you know the world, and people will think, oh, yeah. the dragon, the dragon's bad. But you know what? You, you said something good there, as how much how much of what the Black Aja says can you trust? Well, I can barely trust what most of the other Ajas say, so I definitely can't trust them. You're right. You're right. You can't you can't trust them. You can't trust them. Uh, no, yeah, it's interesting. That's that the whole thing, the whole tone from the from the get go is to be careful, you know, what you're promising away or 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 what um, you know the information that an I said I gives you. Sometimes it's so ambiguous that it could go one way or the other, and and what you think it means might not be what they meant. Right, and you're like, wait, what? So it's it's wordsmithing at its finest sometimes with with these I said I, and especially when they talk among themselves. That's sometimes where you can really see it, and especially with Swan. Uh, the Armorland seat, you, just the scheming, the 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 planning, and kind of putting sisters off and moving pieces around on the chessboard, and it's just uh, it, it's really really interesting. They get way involved in it, and as we said uh, a couple parts back, it's it's more than like this game of houses. Like they're the masters of it. You know, they're playing it in Kyrian, but uh, but at the White Tower, they're on another level. So yeah, you know. Yeah, so um, that chapter ends. Basically, Moraine walks in with Elaine, uh, and then we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go from there, which takes us to chapter six, doorways, um, and uh, this is all from Elaine's point of view. So, let me describe this chapter when I was reading it. I was like, oh, it's another one of these teenage high school. <laughs> I love this person. Yeah. This person, chapter, which is fine. They just come up every. They, it just feels like we just get them every every so often. I'm like, oh yeah, here we go. So, uh, Moraine kind of walks in. She's with Rand. Uh, or no, she is. She's upset with Rand. Excuse me. Right, and Elaine's kind of watching the exchange between them. Right. Uh, yeah, and they're talking about how mule headed two rivers men are. Right. Uh, you know, Nynaeve is obviously. You know, she's. She's okay with Moraine, uh, that Moraine is unable to influence Rand to do as she wishes, Um, which is weird. You know, it's like Nynaeve still has this thing about Moraine. Moraine, yeah. It's like you're an Aes Sedai now. So, I mean, she's kind of – yeah, So I, but she still doesn't trust her. Um, so, uh, uh, Gwen's kind of asking Moraine, you know, why are you upset with Rand? Um, and instead of answering, she turns her attention to Joya and Amiko. Um, Elaine is afraid of Joya, right? When she realizes that, uh, that she's not bound, but at least uh, shielded from the true source. Uh, she observes that Nynaeve and Egwene seem to be no more afraid of Joya than Moraine is and admits to herself that sometimes she finds it difficult to be brave and wishes she could be as bold as others. And, you know, I feel bad for Elaine because I like Elaine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, Elaine's great. Uh, you know, she's she's wonderful. And this is... Um they're, they're all trying to kind of find their, their place here in distinguishing. Well, I mean, Robert Jordan's distinguishing these, these various characters and their personalities and things like that. But, but yeah, and that's the thing. There's this, I, he does a great job of this back and forth of like, sometimes they're all, they've got that still trying to be uh, Aes Sedai like you know, facade or appearance, but yet they're not, you know what I mean? And this is the chapter where you kept saying to me, like, as they're, they're not, man, like, he, like Moraine is the, I said die. They are pretenders right now. And like we we sometimes kind of forget that. Like they're very new, very fresh, very green. Um, even Elaine, who is daughter heir of Camelin. But um yeah, man. I mean, so so I don't know. Keep that in mind, I guess. Uh Nynaeve, though, I, I like what you, you were kind of pointing out that she and Moraine still kind of have this beef because yeah, she's taking pride in the fact that Rand cannot be, you know, kind of kind of kind of controlled, but yet Egwene. If you if you watch Egwene, Egwene is also trying to do almost the same thing that Moraine is doing to to some degree. Although she's like you know she still is friendly about it, but it's almost like you know when is he going to see um, the writing on the wall or whatever? Well, it's like look, he's been reading books. He knows what what he's supposed to be doing. And actually, the whole chapter starts off with 
Moraine kind of losing her cool. So it's a very like, uh, you almost see behind the curtain for the Aes Sedai. Moraine is literally saying Randall Thor is a mule headed stone willed fool of a man. And Elaine is like a little angry about that because she obviously likes Rand. Egwene is sort of like, well, that's probably true. Uh, but he's still like, he's just being stubborn. And Nynaeve takes pride in the fact that like, uh, that's the two rivers for you. Moraine, why don't you stay out of our business, you know? So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it, it's it, just an interesting dynamic in the room. And then you know, what's what's off-putting is the freaking Black Aja is over in the corner, sh- you know, uh, sh- <laughs> shielded, right? It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, then, then one of the, I guess one, one of the other things, they're, they're kind of just going back and forth, right? Moraine says we're, that they're going to, the two are going to go to the traitor's court, basically, in Tarval, and that's where she kind of threatens to send them. Um, and then you do kind of have this cool thing here with Elaine, right? Because, again, this chapter is from her point of view, um, in that uh, Elaine's ultimately trying to almost almost like she's in the peacemaker role, right? She's in the middle of everybody trying to, like, calm every, everybody down. Um, and then she realizes – she, she kind of realizes that um, – she, uh, there's things that Egwene and Nynaeve can do that she doesn't think Moraine can do. And so I, I it, in, in some ways, it makes me feel like Elaine is actually kind of behind, uh, like on, on the growth curve, right, of becoming an Aes Sedai and using the power and all of this stuff. Um, but like behind Egwene and Nynaeve and whether, whether she's learning at like a normal pace or Egwene and Nynaeve are just learning at a very accelerated pace. Uh, is 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 kind of interesting if or you know it's possible that different Aes Sedai can do different things, which is, I think is something that they've been kind of slowly telling us yeah. that different Aes Sedai are better at different things, or they just do will do different things than other people. But the way like Elaine kind of views it is like it just it feels it feels like I don't I don't, I don't mean to be this to be offensive offensive, but it's almost like she's like she's younger, right? Like you know sometimes when you get a POV of somebody that's like. Uh, a kid or something like that. Yeah. They like yeah. they, it's a, obviously a different perspective than somebody. Um, so not that she is, but it's just it, that's almost what it feels like when she's viewing other Aes Sedai. Is she's she's maybe a little more timid um, and, and stuff like that. When re- I think she should be way further along, given her kind of upbringing and and stuff like that. Yeah, you're right, and I think it just it, it depends in the moment and what we're talking about because when it comes to the power, the other girls I think have a, a confidence because they are so strong. Their potential is. Not far more, but they're of the three in the room. It's Nynaeve, Egwene, and then Elaine. And then Moraine is co- sort of like she's fully trained, full Aes Sedai. The rest of them are just sort of accepted. Um, so you're right in that in, in that regard, yes. And now if we started talking about how like politics and the lay of the land and why right. then then Elaine steps up and you're like, Oh, there she is. There there's the girl who was who was trained, you know, um at court and understands you know, has lessons from her mother that she brings up. But you're right. She does kind of feel a little bit younger. And then she's also watching this, these other really strong, she has a strong personality herself. So I don't mean to say that she doesn't, but like she is, you, you said peacekeeper. She's trying to, she's watching all of this kind of go down and watching the different emotions in the room. And, and part of the underlying thing here too, is she likes Rand and doesn't know how to really come out and say that and Egwene is catching on there's a weird sort of like I don't want to step in some other you know Egwene's my Mm -hmm. friend I don't want to step in that territory and and so you can see that she's very respectful which I like I love that about Elaine um and she's just courteous but at the same time she will she will not mess around she's got her own you know fire and, and spirit that that a lot of people really like and um she's she's very interesting yeah. 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 Then well yeah, yeah. Well, then we move into the uh, the love conversations, right? Where it's like Elaine this feels bad cuz she likes Ram, but she doesn't want to get in uh Egwene's way and then Egwene's like I don't really like Land or excuse me, Rand like that. And then they kind of ask Moraine if they know who she's going to marry and she says, "Yes." Yeah, dude, I mean, she's she, she doesn't that. say she doesn't say who, but she's like, "Yeah." Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she does. She does. And so this is interesting. So uh, seemingly ignoring the Aes Sedai, Egwene peered into Elaine's eyes. Elaine wanted to look away and could not. Suddenly, Egwene leaned closer, whispering behind a cupped hand, I love him like a brother. So she's like letting Egwene or uh, uh, Elaine know Rand, right? Okay. I love You're good. Rand yeah. like a brother uh, and you like a sister. I wish you well. Elaine's eyes widened 
a, a smile spreading slowly across her face. She answered Egwene's hug with a fierce hug of her own. Thank you, she murmured softly. I love you too, sister. Oh, thank you. She got it wrong, uh, Egwene said half to herself, a delighted grin blooming on her face. Um, and then she says, have you ever been in love, Moraine? What a startling question. Elaine could not imagine the Aes Sedai in love. Moraine was a blue Aja. So this is interesting. You kind of learn about those Ajas a little bit. We know that greens are a little bit more prone to taking on multiple warders or even a warder and marrying that warder. Um, so Moraine was a blue, and it was said that blue sisters gave all their passions to causes. Uh, the slender woman was not at all taken aback. For a long moment, she looked levelly at the pair of them, each with an arm around the other. Finally, she said, I could wager I know the face of the man I will marry better than either of you knows that of your future husband. Egwene gaped in surprise, right? Because we, we right now are kind of gearing up like, okay, we, we kind of see these possible love stories starting to emerge. And mm -hmm. I mean, just very, you know, but we're starting to, we can go in a couple of different directions here, but we're starting to see it with more rain. Have you sensed anything like, like up to this point? I mean, like, is there anything in your mind that like she's in love? I think the big one is Lan, right? That's uh, like, mm -hmm. well, like initially people were thinking because Nynaeve is like pissed that right. Lan is her warder and is like personally has it out for Moraine more so because she came to the two rivers and took the, you know, um, Emmons Fielders away, but also then she gets to know land and there's some, some more tension building between her and more rain. So I don't know, you know, I just think yeah. that's interesting. Well, then she says it, she says, she tells Nynaeve that it wouldn't be land. Yeah. Oh, does she say right. that right here? She does. Yes, yeah, she does. Yeah. Let me keep reading then. So, uh, who, okay. Yeah. Who, uh, let's see. Perhaps I only meant we share in ignorance. Do not read too much into a few words. She looked at Nynaeve consideringly. Should I ever choose a man? Should I say it will not be land that much? I will say I forgot she said that. There you go. All right. So yeah, that up to this point, that's sort of what you know folks are thinking. And so now that he's out of the way and that's not an option, it's like, well, who the heck is she talking about? You know? I yeah, I feel like it's somebody we haven't even met yet. Yeah. Cause there's nobody that we've met that I would that I would be like, oh, that's who she would choose. Right. So I feel like I feel like it's somebody we'll meet in like eight books or something. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, if I am, I just take a guess because I'm like, I, there's nobody that we know that we've seen Moraine at all interact with that would cause me to believe that that's who she would ultimately end up with. Obviously, if it's not Lan. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. So like and that's uh, we, we were talking about how I said, man, get ready for a whole new batch of characters coming up in other books. It's just like it's already happened to us. Like Berlin walks in and you've been seeing symbols of the hawk for all the you know, for a book and a half now. And now we see who that is. So there are hint that it's the symbols and, and the signs around people that are going to turn into people later on and the story. So, you know, any little reference that we've heard, you, you have to imagine that the author has been foreshadowing towards something. So, yeah, I hear you. I, I hear you. This is it, it's a long series and there's like you know, so, something George R. R. Martin did, right? He beat. You have second waves of characters, a whole new batch of characters that move into a story, and they're, they're on the second wave um, where we either killed off or we lost some of that first wave of minor characters or support characters, and a few of our main cast are moving forward, interacting with new people. So you could, you could imagine that that may happen in this series. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so after that uh, kind of happens, there's a little bit more. Um, with uh, Moraine, right? Uh, you know, she begins to tell the girls about some, well, really some big stuff. Uh, you know, she explains, um, you know, that Rand almost died, right? Uh, a bubble of evil passed through the stone, but he is now healed. Uh, she explains that Rand cannot at the moment stop these things from happening, but that in time he will be better equipped to deal with them. Uh, Elaine feels that Moraine's reaction to the whole incident is cold. Uh, Moraine is angry with Rand because he will not move on from Tyr, and the Forsaken will see his act inaction as a sign of weakness. She tells the girls she wants Rand to go after Samael and for Tyr to go to war against Ilion, who is its next door neighbor to the west. Right, and it, re read that again. So that's that's more Rain, right? Is that what you said? Yeah. Matt, <laughs> big things are happening. Let me tell you something right now, okay? The dragon, right, is reborn, okay? 
there are prophecies that shall be fulfilled, okay? And Rand, he is the one who has to make those choices and those decisions. He has to do it. Go back to the beginning of the Dragon Reborn when Perrin basically said, you know, Moraine's all put out, right? That Rand is like rushes off and does his own thing. He almost he brings down the freaking half half the mountain there on him, almost like, you know, it's an earthquake or whatever. And it's like Perrin says, Moraine, this must be, a, he's, whatever he's going to do, if he truly is the Dragon Reborn, he's making the right call. Although Moraine's point is, doesn't matter if you guys are Tavirin or not, all that Taviran can just, you know, if you're dead, what's it matter? But then you're like, well, wait a second. Isn't the nature of a Taviran that the pattern's using them to its own, you know, there's all that kind of back and forth. And then there's also the idea that, like, he's a dragon reborn, but yet Moraine and the White Tower is trying to control him and, and guide him to the right path. But wait a second. Isn't he destined to save the world? So you have all of that kind of um, jockeying back and forth. And I'm just telling you, everything you just read there about what Moraine thinks he should do, Get that, get that weak sauce out of here, all right? Rand is going to do what he thinks is right. He's the dragon, okay? And he's done a little bit of reading himself, all right? And Moraine is not the only guide by the side in tier, all right? Sorry, yeah. let, me get, let me get off my... I also, by the way, I'll say the disclaimer, I love Moraine, so I don't want anybody thinking like, oh, Sir Ezra doesn't like Moraine. No, Moraine is like probably one of my favorite guide by the sides in, in any fandom that I cover. Uh, I think I think she's wonderful. So yeah, and I, I love her story. And we actually just brought up a lot of stuff about Moraine uh, that I know folks who have read the series are probably wondering how I navigated all of Matt's questions and everything that he just kind of talked about in regards to Moraine. And I'm telling you right now, she's she's fantastic, and I love her for all of um, things that are going to be happening later. In the well, series yeah, she's she's yeah. she's the Gandalf of of the series, yeah. right? I mean, she's yes. the guy by the side. She's she's the Obi Wan, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, okay. So let's see here. As you said, right. She said, you know, there's, there's prophecies that must be fulfilled. There's things going on. She tells the girls about, um, Tyre, uh, Tyrion, you know, the great holding and the twisted doorway that there's a tear on Grial there. Um, and Nynaeve says that they, uh, that had they been there to see if Leandrin and others had taken anything. Right. Uh, so right. Th right. That's right. Ex exactly. So there's a lot going on. Right. Um, Moraine advises the girls to concentrate on Tanchico. Um, that she sent pigeons to Omerlin and reminds them, you know, of their status and then and then leaves. So uh, basically, she kind of put them in check. Hey, you guys still have you guys still have business to take care of. You right, like right. almost like the almost kind of like you let me worry about Rand and you guys go do the things that we've told you to do as don't get as my way etc yes right yeah that's that passion to her causes let, let, let me quickly say too is um just about that storeroom there is a a reference to the storeroom with the tear on Grial. and holy smokes man okay matt we're in tier okay they have possibly one of the this is i mean as far as we know right the most powerful tear on Grial, right we've got this you know, the sword. Mm -hmm. We've got Kalendor. And and like they're collecting these items that you can use the power in. And it's just why? They they also are not fans of the power. And they have all these different like items and possessions. And it is sort of like the Black Aja, if you noticed in the first book, were after various Saw Angriol, Angriol, Tier Angriol, all of that. And by the way, I'm sorry, it's a Saw Angriol. I said Tier Angriol. Um in regards to Kalendor. And there's a difference. And we can talk about the difference at some point because they are all uh, different and mean different things. But anyways, um, yeah, man. So, like, that's that's kind of important. Moraine is she's, she's going to go down to this room and, and kind of, you know, possibly... She talks about the doorway, the, the, the twisted doorway in which she might enter. And we haven't got there yet. That's going to be coming up. But she's, she's deciding, she's thinking right now, should she go into it? Should she not go into it? Uh, all of that. And... It just takes us to a whole nother realm, my friend. You know, like these things were these Tyrion Grial that were created back in during the, the the age of legend. We don't know what they're all used for. And I think one of the coolest things about the Wheel of Time is that there is sometimes great mystery. They're described, you know, and they some of them have uses, some of them do not, um, or some of their un, their their uses are are they've been lost to time, and we don't know what all you can do with them we know like Moraine is carrying around sort of an angry all that she can use to magnify her power remember we were just talking about being burnt out 
using too much of the power. So sometimes they'll take a saw on Grial or, well, Rand is, is channeling through Kalendor and he's opening up like just, I mean, you can't stop him with that sword. All right. He, he's not afraid of anybody. He's not afraid of anybody. And actually, I think we get to that chapter, don't we, where he leaves it behind. And the, during the Trolloc attack, I think we're coming up on that here in a second, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we are. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Well, um, and that's, well, this, the way this, and then, yeah, this, this chapter ends up, this, this chapter ends up with basically, uh, leading into the, the next one where we know that Egwene and Elaine are going to go visit Rand. Uh, and this is a chapter where I had to message you and I was like, this is exactly why they are novices. Yeah. And I was like, you literally could have blown. I mean, do they not realize what they're playing with as here? Oh, I mean, you you could have basically set off a nuclear explosion. I was my what? my mind my, my mind was almost as blown as the entire world of Randland uh, with, yeah. with what with what Egwene suggests here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So they so they go in. Right. They, they're going. They're going to go visit Rand. And I actually really like this chapter a lot. Um, and Elaine's kind of dragging her feet. Uh, you know, it's it to me, it's almost like that. Like when you walk over and you're like, "Hey, see my buddy over there? Yeah, he likes you. He's just uh-huh. too shy to. He's just too shy to come over. Right, right. Come over yeah. and say it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. One, one, one of those. Right. So, uh, that that's what that's what ultimately felt like. So they're gonna go visit Rand. He's being guarded. He's got he's got basically he's got Aiel protecting him. So he's added some more. You know warriors to his cause um uh gall informs us that rand's in a foul mood and he's already thrown out a bunch of other people and uh <laughs> you know and, and all this stuff it's great i just I, I love all of this like rand is just like running like it, it feels like rand is like has some enormous army and all this stuff and it's like yeah. when is this happening because we didn't even see rand in the last book yeah and it's yeah. like how, yeah. how, how how did all this happen like suddenly rand is like is lord rand and he's got this army and yeah. it's like, it's, right it's like all this it, it's just what it feels like it's all this stuff's right. happening um anyway so so they go in right um and you know they're kind of like trying to figure out what's going on with them like how's he look you know how's how's he feel um you know stuff like that Rand thinks moraine sent them uh they tell him no they they didn't do that they came to help him uh learn how to channel to see if they could help him since what (laughs) seriously the worst (laughs) idea i've ever heard in this entire book series right Rand's suspicious, but Elaine, you know, convinces him to give him a try. Egwene embraces Sidar and asks if Rand notices anything. He feels nothing and asks if she's really channeling. Um, and it, it, real it, okay, the, the summary doesn't the summary doesn't 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 cover this. But beforehand, they do. She makes some jokes, right? So she goes in. She kind of sets the tone. Like they're talking about like stuff in Edmund's field, you know, and stuff like that. And I think doesn't Rand pinch her? Like he pinches her. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. bunch of playfulness because that—that's the thing. Is they're they're also coming in to sort of like, there's this. All right, we're going to let Elaine. Yeah, like you said, like Elaine likes Rand, and we're gonna make it clear that Egwene doesn't anymore, and all that kind right, of stuff. Right, and she, right, right and she kind of, um, and she kind of tells him, which is funny, and that like, uh, oh, I guess I guess that's at the end. Sorry, I've, I've just got I've got my order of, of the of the chapter yeah, mixed yeah. up here. That that is happening. Right. So she, they do go in, and at first it, it is it is the channeling. Um, right. She embraces it and asks, you know, he asks if she's really channeling um, and that she says she's holding as much of the power as she can manage. Right. Um, she rates her channeling against Moraine for the first time and realizes that she's uh, she is the stronger. What? What? <laughs> I don't know about that. I, feel I don't like, know about I, that. I feel like Moraine has been playing it real chill. I, uh-huh. I think Moraine is like ridiculously powerful. I don't you know. I don't <laughs> Yeah, you know, just just because we haven't seen it, it's kind of like in Star Wars, right? It's like I don't yeah. th- have we ever seen the full the full extent of Yoda's power? I don't think so. Uh, I don't think okay, so. I, don't I don't think, think so. So, yeah. so like, yeah. so right. Yeah. It's uh, but you just know he right. One of those things. You you clearly know he is right. Um, then um, so so the, so then Egwene reaches out with the power to Rand's wound, right, and describes it as an evil festering. Yeah. So there's that. Well, this is what. This, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, re- remember that's that's the wound that he took um, over Falma, right? And that that was that it's a wound that Moraine wasn't able to heal, and it's been uh, you know festering, and it, even when they try to heal it again, it, it just it it's something that it's stuck with him, and then you know, uh, is it a part of the prophecy? Is it not? They do talk about his blood, you know, being shed on Sheol Ghul and all this kind of all this kind of stuff, and it he's still got a, a major. A major, a major wound there. I also want to say, as just to read some of this. So, as you said, 
Moraine tells them, I just want, because we, we talked about this before we started recording. Literally, when they say, we came to help you with channeling, she told him, with the power. What Moraine claimed was supposed to be true, a woman could not teach a man to channel any more than she could teach him how to bear a child. Are, uh, and, and, and they're like, ah, eh, Moraine said, she's just saying that. She just doesn't want us to go. The, the title of this chapter is Playing with Fire. Okay? Playing with Fire. Not something you should do, Sir Matt. No. Not something you should do. So, yeah, that, there's that. I just, just for reference, they were told and they were warned that this is not a good idea. Right. So, But they do it. So this is when things get really bad, right? So Rand can Rand can feel uh, he feels right. Uh, he he begins to feel like oh she's channeling, right? Um, he at first he thinks he's nervous around channeling women, right? Uh, but Egwene thinks not and tests him again to see if he feels anything. Then they ask him to embrace Sidine, but the girls can't sense anything. He proves to them that he is channeling by pin. This is where he pinches uh, Egwene, so Elaine pinches him back. Um, Rand lifts them up by using the power and saying that, uh, and they cannot feel anything holding them. Egwene then tries to embrace the source and realizes that he has shielded them as well. He starts to do other things, move objects around the room. Um, he's uh, having things burst into flames and, and distinguishes the flame by spreading out the heat. Um, and then he releases uh, Sidine. Egwene realizes that Rand is much stronger uh, that, than she is and when, and when he demonstrates his use of the power. So then they start talking about the differences between... Sidine and Sid and Sidar, right? And, and and the differences. And and Egwene says that she has to surrender to the source, right? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And yeah, she yeah. tells Rand, <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what you should do, Rand. You should surrender to it. That hey. is the dumbest <laughs> thing I've ever heard. <laughs> like, wow. and again, it's not it's not that she she doesn't know, right? Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. like yeah. just at that point, like literally. From everything we've ever heard Rand say, and he get, then he says like I have to fight against it, and you know like we it's a it's a struggle to use it. It is it's a total it's totally, totally different. Totally different. And it's like literally everybody that's it's almost like it quite literally is like Star Wars where it's like give in to the dark side. So, you know what I mean? So right, render right. to it. And but it's the you have to fight against it. Right. Right. Yeah, and what's to exactly. say Robert Jordan? What's to say Robert Jordan didn't? You know, oh, rip, yeah, off, rip off fan. Star Wars. Yeah, he's I mean, a Star Wars yeah. Fan. yeah, not he didn't rip it off, but no, let's no. let's just say that obviously that may, that may have been an inspiration. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, the whole yin and yang. I mean, the whole the whole spirit, the whole right. back and it goes it goes way yeah. back. I mean, it's not like it's not like yeah. George Lucas created it, but I mean, I'm right. just saying, you know, he did. It's it's all well, he actually, galaxy. He, it's a it's he, he witnessed it's a, it. It's from a galaxy far yeah. far away. Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but right, and so it's like the idea. It's like what would happen if Rand were to surrender. To the power. Uh, duh. <laughs> you talk about the, you, uh, the, the, the stone of tear would actually fall. I mean, this right. mountain sized stone would legitimately actually I've, fall over. Like that's, yeah, I that's feel like you, I feel like it would be like a nuclear blast. I mean, just look at what Luce Theron did in the prologue of the eye of the world. Yeah. So imagine that I'm guessing the time's like 10. Uh, yeah. you know, basically. Yeah. 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 So. And, 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 and if he's holding calendar, you know, like, look out. I mean, that magnifies him even more, you know? So yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he does, he does talk about not in this chapter, but an upcoming chapter with Cal where he talks about with calendar, he feels like he can, he can do anything. Right. As right. long as he has this sword. Right. Um, so, and then, and then they kind of have their talk where she says she doesn't love him anymore. And he's like, I know he's Rand's like, it's because of what I'll become. And she's like, no, it's not you idiot. It's because I just right. don't like, you know, yeah, 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 I just yeah. don't like you like that. Yeah. Yo, well, let me uh, also another funny part to this. And this is, uh, you know, I don't know. You got to have some fun with these stories and some, some playfulness, you know? So they're talking about doing something with the power and they're wanting him to now do something to them. Right. Or just do something with it. And I'll just read this. Um, so let's see. He could just be standing there for all I can tell, etc. cetera. Um, he can be stubborn, but he isn't foolish. At least he isn't foolish most of the time. Well, stubborn or foolish or something else, I feel nothing at all. Egwene frowned at him. You said you would do as we asked, Rand. Um, are you? If you felt something, um, yeah, if you felt something, so should I. And I do not. She broke off with a stifled yelp. Something had pinched her bottom. Rand's lip twitched, clearly fighting a grin. That, she told him crisply, was not nice. He tried to keep his face innocent, but the grin slipped. You said you wanted to feel something, and I just thought um, his sudden roar made Egwene jump. 
uh, clapping a hand to his left, um, you know, buttocks. He hobbled in a, in a pain circle, so she gets him back, right? Blood gnashes at Gwen. There was no need to, he fell into a deeper, inaudible mutter, and they're, they're getting after him, right? So after he pinches right. her bottom, they're just like, they're laying into him with the power. It's a, so it, it's, it it's a, a funny playful, scene. It's, a, yeah. it's a playful, funny chapter, yeah. Yeah, it's funny. So I'm like, man, holy cow. But yeah, you're right. Like the, the whole idea of, of, well, I got to say, so we were thinking about possibly running a poll on on Twitter. <laughs> and Sir Matt goes, "Well, like, I, I was <laughs> hilarious, dude. I, I I laughed for probably twenty minutes about that because Matt, just being his first time reading reading the series, and also Matt loves to just you know poke the bee's nest. You know, he loves to just kind of get things right. You're like Matt Cawthon in the story. It's like straight right. up. It kind of kind of cracks me up. Um, I was like, man, I need a poll or something, you know, and then. Some time went by, you know, we're doing a couple other things and out of nowhere, Matt is like probably reading for the chapter, you know, getting prepped for the chapter. And he said, I don't know. He's like, which is more powerful, Saidine or Saidar? And I was like, ah, I'm like, I got I'm like dude, what are you trying to start a fight? Over? I mean, like, uh, it's, it's, uh, it, was, it was just so funny because just... they're so different, right? They're so, and they're, they are equal and that, you know, men and women using them. But right. that was so I'll, funny. I'll, I was maybe like, I'll, I'll just, run I'll that just... poll and see how, see who wins, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it, it probably it would. I'll, I'll post it in the Wheel of, Wheel of Time Reddit, and people will just, oh, here we go. Oh, here, here we go. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I mean, they're funny. they're base, they're they're equal, are, is the thing, right? They're yeah. Just, they're just yeah. different, they're, but they're equal. Yeah, they're, yeah. Right, exactly. And, and, and yeah, it's, um yeah, one is the male half and one uh, is, is the female half. And so, yeah, it was just so funny, though, because I was just like, I knew you were just sort of like, wow, wouldn't that just cause a an absolute stir? People are like, are you serious right, right now? <laughs> like, right. Because <laughs> this whole chapter is about, like, Egwene and them trying to understand, like Moraine said, like, you can't teach a man how right. to channel you can't and then women also vice well, versa can't. I, I guess i guess maybe i do have some que- I, I guess i do have some questions about that because it feels like well i guess there's it's different right so like because rand is the dragon so like is the dragon i mean outside of that like the dragon is like infinitely more powerful than any like i said i could ever be or well i don't think this hurts to say this so like the the idea is that the dragon was Luce Theron, as we know, Luce Theron Telamon, um, and that was his position, his title. He was he was he was the right. dragon. Um, so, and we've already seen tons of stuff where someone there's some voice in the back of his head. Someone is talking to him, and seemingly, he's learning and doing things, and or sometimes by accident, right? He even once he does something, he can't replicate it. Like he's like he feels so lost and so kind of out of out of control. Like he doesn't know what what to do and and at times when he does something epic it's seemingly like he retreats to the back of his mind and something else or someone else steps forward and takes over um and and so i guess that's all i can say about that for right now but i mean it's uh yeah so the the drag he was just an Aes Sedai back in the day uh during the age of legends there were male Aes Sedai and female Aes Sedai so they were one. So like they they were servants in the hall of servants, and I mean the whole the, the fun little story there is that uh, I mean they had differing views. And actually, they used to. And this is not spoiler. This is this is uh, Varen says this at one point during the Great Hunt. Is, is I think it's the Great Hunt. Um, it, is talking about what men and women used to be able to accomplish with the one power together um, when they had certain you know because right. Like they, they they could they could link they could create certain things they could do stuff with the power. So Luce Theron was just the leader of the Aes Sedai. He was he was first in the Hall of Servants and and probably one of the one of the most powerful. So it's not necessarily that. First of all, any of those Aes Sedai from the Age of Legends I think are more powerful because it's just like when the Forsaken are showing up. Moraine is like she's learning stuff that is coming back to like her. Balefire. Yeah, she's she learned bear, like things that are like that's forbidden. You can't do that. And here she is, like flashing it around, doing like, "See you later, Balefire." Um, so she's learning these things because she knows for a fact that if the Forsaken are no longer bound and the seals to the Dark One's prison are breaking, well, she better be ready, right? I mean, they better be ready to fight some some OP, you know, bad guys and bad girls. Mm-hmm. I mean, they are like coming after these these folk, and they're gonna rage war on their world and so they've got to be ready for that and 
it's also why I think like the pattern pushes forward Egwene and Nynaeve, um, and these channelers seem to increase. Why are these youngsters so much more powerful? They said, like, we haven't seen anyone this powerful since, like, they don't know when. I mean, that like, like everyone at the tower, when they see Egwene and Nynaeve and Elaine, and they assess their power, um, and they have to be near them to kind of do that, they're like, whoa. I mean, it's almost like you have a higher, a way higher midichlorian count than we do. Why right. is that? Yeah, is that is that the is that the pattern? Is what is pushing them forward? You know, so to me, it's so it having the title of the dragon. I don't think makes you any. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's it's really you're the chosen one. I mean, you do have like you're, you're loose there and come again. Uh, suppose the dragon yeah. will be reborn. But I guess think it, so, is he's not anything extra. There's no extra power or ability or 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 whatever attached to being the dragon. dragon. So you yeah, are just, just a, I was just wondering if it's like, well, because is it like, so if, if the power is just its own thing. Well, he is also a like, too. So that, I gotta, right, exactly. So the Tavirin thing is different. So that's the thing. It's kind of hard, I think, to kind of just scale things, right? Well, like he's got like this and he's got this. And yeah, so it's, um, it's kind of like trying to pit like, well, is Superman, can, is Superman stronger than, well, that, that one's easy. Let me, no, let me not use Superman because he's, he's obviously re- way too powerful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like Thor versus Captain Marvel, right? It's like, okay, well, all right. You got to think about, well, Thor has his hammer and then she's got the thing, you know, it's yeah. like kind of, they, yeah. it becomes a little bit easier to try to kind of pay, power well, scale these people. But like, yeah. oh, well, real quick is, is it like, cause it just seems like Rand is like, it's ridiculously powerful, right? I mean, it feels like he's, he's pretty ridiculous. Is it because uh, at all, be, um, because like if it's the source, right? Well, there's a lot of women pulling from the source, whereas there's only like one oh. guy pulling from the source. Wow, I, I actually, wow, dude, I've I've not actually thought about that like like that. You know what I mean? Um, see, I, I don't think so, but I mean, I that's a really, really, really interesting and I think good thought because you have multiple people pulling from it. But so in in terms of like you know Egwene and Nynaeve, they also then attach themselves to Saidar and they're pulling from that 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 side as well so you know you would think they would have since they're entering a pool where there's a lot of channelers that they wouldn't be able to have as much power as they do because you're like what you're saying is it's delegated to everybody else right it really is almost like it i hate to use midichlorians but like you have more potential so i guess let me put it like this Let's I get, say I get you. I get yeah, you. Yeah, like 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 Moraine is she may be able to whip both of those girls could have more potential and pull more on the one power, but they might not be able to do diddly squat with it. Which is right now compared to Moraine, they can't do a darn thing. Moraine knows she could she could weave around them like crazy because she's a master at it. Um and but now is her potential could she pull as much in as as them? Maybe not. But she has tricks, right? So she has her angriol. She has a a a um, basically something you could hold in your hand, or it can fit in your pouch. It's it's these things that were created by the power that will allow you to channel more, you know, of that power. And it, it almost takes you if you're at, um, you know, whatever level you're at, it's going to increase that. You know what I mean? Your your, right. your potential to to pull in more of the of the one power. So with Rand, you know, having Calendor, that's one of those things. Like now he can safely channel more of the one power. And so that makes him infinitely more stronger, but even without it. So even in, the, in this example right here, his, what he, he himself, his body can handle is way more than anybody else. Right. Way more than anybody else right now. Okay. So that's, that's kind of where it's at. But there are ways to count. See, the cool thing about Robert Jordan's writing, I think, is that in the power systems, you have counters. Just like this right. whole... If they catch him, if they catch him off guard, could he be shielded? You know, and once you're shielded, can you get out of it? That's like, what I say. I think I think somebody will be able to break out of it. Yeah, and so that's that's the thing. So like, are are there even though he's super powerful, are there little things where you could neg- you know you could basically uh, negate the the uh, th- that great potential that he has, or could you have a saw on Griol or tear on some other device that would allow you to trump? Him, like, you know like I mean? for example, could Elaine right now? Let's say she knew how to shield, and, let, yeah. and let's just pull in Luce Theron because obviously he was like the full on dragon, re- absurdly yeah. powerful. Could she shield him and hold him? 
Yeah, I. It's, so there is sometimes if you know it's happening, I think that you can bat against it and you can you can kind of combat against it. But I think if he's caught unaware, I think he can be shielded. And okay. now, can can you hold it? Is the thing because sometimes let's say you're a really weak channeler and you shield someone, um, they make it seem as if you can batter against that kind of shield and almost break through it. And so it's almost like I don't know you. If you build a wall around me that's made of cardboard, I can bust out of it. If you right. build a wall around me made of, of cement block, I could, if I hammer hard and long enough at it, I, I, I probably, it, it'll take years, but I might be able to get out of it. You see, you know what I'm saying? So, like, if you. that channeler is only putting up a, a cardboard <clears throat> shield around Rand, and it, then then maybe not. But, yes, they can, yeah. I mean. Okay, one 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 more question that we can jump into it, too. So... And this, you, this, this may be spoiler, so you don't, you don't have to answer if it is. Um, so Balzamon, right? Yeah. Does he use Sidar? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. He, so, so even, even, yeah. even, even, even the, for, even the Forsaken. So we have, so the Forsaken we've seen do use the male. It's not like they use something else because they're dark ones. No, exact. Well, uh, yeah. So they they are using the male. When you see the male channelers are using the male half of the one power and the okay, female. regardless. Yep, okay, regar yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And yep. yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to answer <laughs> more. And we did answer. And and correct me if I'm wrong, but we did we did ultimately go back and or did we ever did we ever? Because I, I I had been confused before about warders, and I was like, well, so Lan only has power through Moraine, right? Because mm -hmm. he's so he he's not using Sidar. She's basically letting him use Sidine. Right, right. Yeah. Um yes. Uh yes, yeah, so she's gifting it. Yeah. A, a basically. Yes. Yeah. Let okay. me read let me read this on shielding just just so I case because I'm I'm all kind of you know all the time I'm going off of memory and like uh my my you know <sighs> And pulled in so many different fandoms, sometimes I forget things. So shielding. It's an act of forming a weave that will block another channeler from accessing the one power. Though the blocked channeler will still be able to sense it. So they can sense the one power outside of that shield, outside of that barrier. Uh, during the Age of Legends, the weave is referred to as a buffer. The act of shielding um, is incredibly useful tactic when channeling, uh, when, when a channeling foe needs to be subdued. So while any person who channels can lay a shield on another if the one being shield is, shielded is much stronger in the power than the other the shield can be essentially like broken through if that's where i was talking about the cardboard box type of thing right you know um so and we did see we did see uh, where they placed a shield on someone this was in the you know uh, the dragon reborn and the shield was tied off and it was left um and that's something that's almost like you created the shield you didn't have to stand there and continue to hold the box around the person. You essentially could tie it off and say, I'm going to leave you there, walk away and do my own thing. And you kind of left a shield weave over top of that person. So if that made, if okay. that made sense. That does. And that, yeah. yeah. And that, that's about as far as it. there are other things uh, involved in, in shielding and stuff that uh, it happens later in the series and it'll be more, it'll be further explained, but I think for the basics of it, yeah, that's, that's fine. So like in this situation, I think Rand did just shield them. Didn't he? I think in that chapter right there, didn't he shield the girls? Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. Yeah. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter whether you're a, it's not like only female channelers can shield. Can me. do it. Yeah. Yeah. So it goes vice versa. I mean, um, so that's something to kind of look at. Well, and we saw, I guess we were talking about that earlier, you know, low gain is shielded by the red Aja. So when they capture him, they shield him. So that way he cannot access the one power because he is powerful. He is very powerful, and it took several of them to subdue him and to shield him. So I, that is where I'm bringing in that example of, like, it may take several channelers who are at a lower, um, you know, I don't know, you think about it, strength, right? If their strength is just, you know, one-fifth of low gains, what's going to take five of them or maybe six to subdue a low gain? And if Rand... If everyone is is like one tenth of his power, well, you're going to need eleven or twelve to take him down. If that makes sense. So yeah, it's, it's yes, power it scaling, and it's it's sick because actually <laughs> during the Age of Legends, like you get into, and your brother, I I know he's probably like 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 S. You're, there's so many things that you're missing that you could be bringing up, and we can. I'm always afraid that I'm going to say something that is spoiler, and someone's going to be like literally, you know, 
uh, fire out, you know, it'll go over my head. So don't worry. But unless I, I know, but I know, but some of the first time, right. But some of those listeners are, are, you know, some of them are like, I'm, some of them, by the way, I'm wondering if it is their first listen, because some of them have been like, that's a spoiler. I'm like, well, how do you know what is going on? But then right. they find out later and they come back and they say, Sir Ezra, doggone it. Um, so anyways, but no, there are, there are really cool things that happen during the age of legends that I think are, are neat, uh, ways in which you can kind of, uh, you know, use the power. So. Okay. Enough of that. Um, wow. All right. Uh, let's dive back into where we were. Um, so this is chapter eight, um, kind of finishing up here. And chapter 10 is really the big one. So um, Egwene uh, has left Elaine alone with Rand. So, let's go. Uh, Rand doesn't really initially notice that she's there. Um, he's kind of uneasy. He doesn't really know how to act around her. Uh, he keeps calling her like my lady, uh, right? You know, given her <laughs> her kind of high birth. Um she asked him if he was if she, if he was very hurt by what Egwene said, um, and uh, he wasn't really. He, he and he says that what uh, he tells her makes her relieved that he won't long for Egwene anymore. Uh, he offers to make her uh, a flower using the power and some feathers, but he cannot embrace Sidine to change the feathers and throws them to the floor, offering uh, her cloth instead. Right. Um, Elena is surprised to find that she trusts him to use Sidine in her presence, uh, particularly after what he just did to them. Uh, she takes the feathers he dropped as a keepsake and accepts the silk, saying she is sure uh, the Majer can have something uh, made from it. She asks Rand if he likes her and is frustrated as he seems not to know what she means. Oh, gosh. God. Just feel it. bad for Elaine there, right? Uh, finally, he says he's fond of her, too. She is still inwardly. She's kind of worried about Bear Lane, though. So she tells him she wants him to kiss her. Whoa. Wow. I mean, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, he's surprised, doesn't really know how to react, but she taunts him about it um, and she and about his shock and he kisses her. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's Getting go. hot and heavy. All uh -huh. right. Uh -huh. He asks her Play, if playing she, with fire. If, this should have been called playing with fire. I mean, what's seriously. going on here? Yeah, no. uh, she and Egwene schemed uh, this be, uh, between them and she manages to appear shocked. She asks him uh, if he's sorry for the pinch and he is honest and says that they deserved it. Uh, she heals him <laughs> where I know it's great. She heals him where she's pinched uh, for telling him the truth. So now we kind of got Elaine moving in on Rand, right? So uh, mm -hmm. there, there we go. So I mean, geez, how many? I, I mean, how many people's Rand gonna be getting with? Okay, because we thought it was a Gwen. Guess not. Men's kind of out there. Uh -huh. She's got some feelings, right. or at least, if you know. I'm glad you didn't forget now, that. Now I'm Elaine, forget that. So here hey, we go. What about Celine? What about Celine? Say, you know? well, we're about to find out. We're about to talk about <laughs> Celine. So. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. All right. So Gaul interrupts them, uh, right, with the arrival of the Tyrant Lords. And Elaine goes uh, to leave, telling Rand to think about what she had said. Yeah. <laughs> I think she'd be I think he's been thinking about something else. But yeah. um, as the Lords enter the room, right, uh, and all their finery, Elaine observes that Rand uh, is like a stork among peacocks in his plain clothes and that he basically has basically he's in charge. Is what is what is what she immediately kind of realizes. Yeah. So then we move into yeah. Rand's point of view, and which Rand is in charge, and he's kind of telling him off. Really, he says he's like, "I want lower taxes." Yes, uh, and so they're kind of doing some some lordly, uh, lordly kind of stuff. He notices that they don't like it, but they do listen to what he says. Basically, um, is 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 where we're kind of at. So now we can jump back to Egwene. Um, and this is where Egwene and, uh, and and Matt kind of run into each other, right? Um, and so this is where we're kind of going to get back into in, into their arc. So um, Matt's kind of silent, right? Which is kind of mm -hmm. weird because that's yeah, not really weird. like him. Uh, he replies, um, it doesn't really bother him uh, if he's troubled by the night before. He says, eh, it doesn't really bother him. Uh, Egwene mentions that she and Inive do not see very much of him. Uh, he tells her they've been busy playing cards. And remembers the last time he saw him that uh, Nynaeve, they bound him up with a power and made him yeah. take the Armorlin's letter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they did. Yeah. And, and they also did. There was a whole thing where he came on a rescue mission and they're like, yeah, thanks for, you know, we don't need your help. We rescued ourselves, which is funny. And it's, you know, it's, 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 it's like, Matt's like, ah, are you kidding me? It's, you know, like, can at least for trying or, you know, being here, get some sort of like you cared, you tried. Um, sometimes I think they really don't give him enough credit i don't know and i think that's maybe why people love matt so much because they see him like like i don't know 
he doesn't let it get to him, but it's still interesting. Now the big deal here is we bring up the Tier Angry All again, right? So yeah. that comes up, right? Yeah, because Matt's Matt's uh, they kind of want Matt to talk to Moraine about the his what's going on with him, like the old tongue, why he keeps speaking in it. He's got kind of these holes in his memory, and Matt's like, I don't like Aes Sedai. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he all right, and no, he doesn't. He just <laughs> got away his from his relationship him and, with Tom. Yeah, right, and so like it's like the power. I mean, Tom's warning. He was he was there at the White Tower. He blew the horn. By the way, he blew the horn of Valir. Okay, yeah. This he guy's is the horn deal. holder, as as I, as I view. Yeah, that's it. right. That's that's, that's, that's his right. thing now. Yeah. Um. So I want to read this real quick. So they, you know, Egwene is not supposed to tell him about this, but she does. She has this weird. I don't know if it's a Tavirin thing or whatever, but like she does tell him about the Tirangriol, the twisted doorway that held answers on its other side. It was the dangers she emphasized, the consequences of foolish questions and those touching the shadow, the dangers even Aes Sedai might not know. Uh, she was more than flattered that he had come to her, but he had uh, to show a little sense. You must remember this, Matt. Fri- frivolous questions can get you killed. Um, so if you do use it, you will have to be serious for a change. Um, and you mustn't ask any questions that touch the shadow. So she's only just like, you know, she's just barely heard Moraine talk about this door in which Moraine, who is an Aes Sedai, is afraid to go through. And all of a sudden, she's offering up to Matt like, well, I don't know, Moraine's going there for answers. Maybe you should go there too. But don't be foolish. Be serious about this whole thing. And it's just like such a crazy thing because you're going to, you'll find out. Like, it's just not something that you would lightly send your friend on. And I don't know if it's just a pattern thing or, you know, as I've been saying, a a Tavirin thing. But uh, it's interesting. So Matt's, you know, he's going to consider it. He's going to, he's going to consider it. Um, And that's kind of where where we're at with that but yeah it's interesting that it's a Gwen who it's odd where sometimes when those two kind of bump into each other you're like i haven't really seen much from like them interacting it's kind of like oh yeah i mean it's nice to see but it's also feels kind of weird so yeah yeah um okay well ready uh, ready to do chapter nine here decisions so this one kind of jumps around a lot actually um, uh, Matt's, uh, Matt's kind of point of view. Um, Matt finds that no one will play cards with him, right? Since the bubble of evil as they're calling it, right? The, the whatever, uh, and that the women aren't really interested in him anymore. Yeah. He, he, he feels the parent and Tom are also noticeably asp- absent. And the only person he keeps seeing is Moraine, who he's trying to avoid. He visits the great holding, but leaves without going near the door, uh, near the doorway, still maintaining that he'd be a fool to try it. He goes into the city to avoid Moraine and finds someone to play dice and car- to try and find someone to play dice and cards with. He visits the taverns on the dockside, um, in the mall of the inns of the calm, uh, where he finds the stakes of the games too small. Despite wanting to stay away, he keeps finding himself back in the stone. He tries to think. He tries not to think about why, but he keeps getting drawn back there. So yeah, yeah. pretty obvious where we're gonna go with Matt uh, to say <laughs> to yeah. to to say the least. So then it shifts to Perrin, who we haven't seen uh, for well, like eight, uh, well, uh, six chapters or seven chapters, excuse me. Um, uh, Perrin's out about in the city. He sees Matt uh, in the taverns drinking and gambling too much, uh, as Perrin kind of thinks, which is great. This is where you get those like cross, yeah. uh, you know, point of views. Uh, he thinks Matt's behaving a little bit out of character, but he never even talks to stop with him and find out, you know, what he's doing because uh, he's looking for something to draw Fael away. He's listening to all the news and rumors that's going on. Um, all he hears is news of wars and not really wanted to send her off to that. He keeps having to lie to her about where he's spending all of his time, but he keeps he's basically just trying to get her to leave. He parents yeah. parents trying to get parents trying to get her to leave. Cut back to Egwene. Uh, Gwen and Ineve are still questioning Joya and Amiko, not really getting anywhere. Uh, Gwen has even tried telling him that, uh, you know, what the other had said, despite what Nynaeve said. Nynaeve said not to do that, but Gwen does right. it. Uh, Miko's so, eager to, uh, to please, but Joya is unflustered. Yeah. They receive, uh, they get no word from Tarvalin. Gwen is fretting over whether Tanchiko is a false trail or not. Um, and finds herself being kind of snappish with everyone. She's pleased that Matt's still in the stone and also sympathetic with his desire to know, uh, as she also longs for the tower so that they can learn they can learn new things. Uh, Avienda, we're getting a little bit more of her. She's beginning to visit Egwene seemingly of her own choice. 
Uh, she was uh, wary at first, but Egwene is enjoying her company. Uh, Avienda does not really understand, you know, why Egwene and Elaine have not done some, something drastic about Bear Elaine. She thinks she's she kind of. Do. I'm so I like Avienda. I'm, yeah. I'm I'm liking her more and more. Right, right. Um, Elaine, uh, cut back to her. She's spending every possible moment she can with Rand. Uh, you know, she just yeah. kind of wants to go be alone with Rand. They're real close. They're getting real, real close. close. It feels yep. like that, you, you know, that, that your, your first teenage romance where you're just trying right. to whew, get off. Right. <laughs> Try to get it all in. <laughs> Try well, to trying, to, trying to get out, go off by yourself for, yeah. Yeah. Um, with help of some, of some maidens of the spear, uh, and I spending all of her free time with Lan. Same thing. Yeah. Um, you know, Rand's. Rand's quest Rand questions Elaine about governing nations uh, and seems to be taking her advice and Bear Lane has not left her chambers, which Elaine is happy about. So, again, just kind of jumping around, seeing what's going on. We cut back to Rand, and this is where things start. This is where it's like, okay, now we have our, our catalyst to push us forward. It's kind of what I feel like the, la the chapters 1 through 10 of all of the books have been. Chapters 1 through 9, pretty much. Chapter 10 is about when you really hit that, like, okay, now everything's going off in its own big big kind of direction right mm -hmm. so uh rand's uh point of view here rand is uh working with the tyrian lords he's keeping them on their toes by turning up at their secret gatherings mm -hmm. yep, you know yep, the, uh, yep. he learns from tom uh and getting them to implement new measures he's still determined not to start a war uh, he finds Elaine's advice useful when he's dealing with the high lords and he's beginning to planning his next move on how to take the forsaken down uh, pretty much. Yeah. <clears throat> he's considered asking Elaine to stay, but decides against it as he's sure, you know, she doesn't know how she would feel about that. Doesn't want to give her false hope. He doesn't, he's not entirely, he's, he's still feeling yeah. it out. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Rand meets with, uh, my, uh, Mylian, right. And Sunamon again yeah. about the treaties, um, for the trying to, you know, distribute, just grain, getting grain yep. out there. Yep. He tells them to go to Bear Lane and offer her an appropriate treaty or he will have them both hung. Rand's not messing around anymore. No, he does not sweet. mess around. Yeah, kind of a dictator. Uh, yeah. really yeah, not yeah. a lot. Not a lot of democracy going on with, <laughs> with Rand here. Yeah. Um, although he, he does use a quiet tone, uh, and it says it has an effect on them, right? Uh, <laughs> certainly. Uh, he's disgusted with himself for threatening them, so he, he feels kind of bad. He's reflecting the fact that Elaine will be leaving the next day, uh, and on the prophecies of the dragon that name him. Uh, from the herons branded onto his hands. That's when we get that sick line, like one heron, you know, all that, mm -hmm. all of that kind of stuff. With yeah, it's pretty interesting. I mean, um, so that was a lot. I mean, there's that that, that is uh, there's. I just want to mention real quickly, I guess, before we get like like there, there's Celine. There's the, the the reason that Matt and Perrin are having so much. It's there's a Taviran pull. I don't know if you noticed that there's this thing where uh, essentially. Um, they, they want to leave or they want to go do something, but there's some reason that they are kind of sticking around and like, yes, they know they need to leave and they may leave at some point, but not yet. Not, this is not the time um, exactly for them to leave, if that makes sense. So they are kind of struggling with that and we, and we see that and we're starting to understand more of the dynamic between those Tavir and what, what that means, if, if that makes sense. So that was kind of interesting. And, and then, as you said, we see the romance, we see um, the stuff with Bear Lane is is interesting because he's, forcing it's in that ex, uh, exchange that you see him do almost exactly the opposite of what Moraine wanted him to to do um you know remember she was saying earlier to Egwene and Nynaeve like this is what Rand should be doing and he literally tells the tyrants to do like the exact opposite of what Moraine was going to have him do almost exact opposite so I thought that was interesting I just wanted to kind of point that out because yeah, there's that. He's also protecting the first of May, and he he's protecting. He's he's asking them to kind of, you know, be fair with with um, Bear Lane and then um, to trade with Ilian. They have a major kind of conflict and rivalry with them, but yet, like, if they're suffering, we're going to, um, you know, possibly help them out, which is just is foreign to them. And then, yeah, all as you say, all of this is kind of you know leading him to to this, this showdown or this, this situation with Celine. And by the way, yeah, uh, <laughs> twice and twice shall he be marked twice to live and twice to Let's die. Go. Once the Heron to set his path twice, the Heron to name him true. There you go. Um, yeah, that, that, by, by the way, someone go look up the prophecies of the dragon, look up all of them. Let me scroll for five pages, by the way, 
It is literally insanely. It stretched it out through the entire series, and it's fantastic. I read the whole thing once to somebody at a party, and they were like, "When is this thing going to be over?" Um, but yeah, it, the whole time and I've been I've been kind of hinting at it. Um, and actually, to start the uh, to start the show, one of the things that we talked about was one of the, his blood on the rocks of Sheogul, washing away the shadow, sacrifice for man's salvation. That's another part um, to that, where in which he is saying to Moraine, they're talking about his wound, and she, she, he's bringing up tidbits about the prophecies of the dragon that he has read and also that he's picking up from books. There was a reference to all the books that he had been reading. Tom is also guiding him as well, and so he's starting to kind of understand what it means to have those, to be Heron marked, and what it means to, what he has to do with, um, who are the dragon's people? What does it mean that the stone of tear is falling? All of this kind of stuff. And then walks in um, Celine. You know, what 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 is that? What what does that mean? How how how, did, how does she become significant here? And then she again, remember, she was someone who uh, around Portal Stone time could read the symbols and understood how you know yeah. to use them and stuff. Weird, odd Age of Legends kind of you know stuff, right? And we find out right. why she knew that. And remember, by the way, an error on my part. Uh, early on, you kept asking me about like, will we ever see Celine again? And I ca- and we had done some looking up, like, yeah, does it ever confirm that like, Lanfear is Celine, right? Right. No, it is right here. I mean, it's like it's, it's it right is. Here. Well, it it is. Well, and and the weird thing is, it's one of those things where because I can't even remember what it was. So like, the, the, uh, the quick thing here is that like there, I did know a few things coming into this series. But this was one where I kept asking, and I was like, "Well, hold on, I found this like Celine character is," and then people say that she's Lanfear, but nobody's really confirmed it. Like, like, and I even asked like my brothers, I was like, "Is she a thing?" And so I was like, "Oh, is it like a mystery?" Like I, th- but I guess I did not, I did not know that there's actually a chapter where she's flat out like, "No, no, I am Lanfear, like 100." percent I just thought like you would see them, and it would be some sort of a thing. So and I this actually was I. Actually, even though I thought like, oh, well, she is, I didn't know that there would be a chapter confirming it because yeah. I couldn't find anything online about it. They're just saying like, oh, she it's very likely that she is and stuff like that. So and you kind of knew uh, that so, you were like, as I mean, that's who it's obvious. Right. Is, yeah. I, like, well, it is. It is obvious because they both wore white dresses and and she knows all these things. And I I mean, it was, I thought it was. But again, you don't meet Landfear until the end of the Great Hunt. Yeah. Right. Right, and so then it's like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, and then you see, then you see that same description again later on, um, right. when Celine or whoever it is 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 popping in and out of the tower and in and out of the dream world and all that kind of stuff, and so uh, right. you start to really put it together. But then, yeah, you kept asking me the question, and I was just like, dude, I don't actually remember if they ever officially say, say it, yeah. yeah, but they do. So here it is. So correction on yeah, my and part. Yeah, and then she kind of, and then she, ch- it, yeah, and then she changes, right? So she is a little more, she's a little bit older, right? Is what uh, basically Rand says. So I'm guessing Celine looks a little bit younger, and Landfear sure. looks a little bit younger. There's a better description in the book, but we can just leave it as that. Yeah, no, fuller. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah, is, the, yeah. is the word that Rand uses. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah. So let your imaginations uh, run wild, run wild with 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 that one. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, she you know she tells him, and then she, man, she starts to say all these all these crazy things, and that she wants is that she wants loose Theron. Yeah. And they want to rule together. So from what we've seen from Landfair again, and I I think in the Dark Friend Social, I don't think she ever or I I don't know or um. There's the ch- I don't was it in the Dark French Social or was it a different chapter? Remember where Balzamon is yeah. talking and he's he's talking. I think it is Lanfear. I mean yeah, it is, there. but I, yeah. I I just can't remember if they said her name or not. Um, because yeah. in the the prologue to the Great Hunt, they talk about that woman who it seems very likely then is Celine, and now we know is Lanfear. Um, so it must be it must be the one where she's talking to Balzamon, like, do you still serve? So it feels like she again is on her own agenda. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, yes. And, and so there's, there's some real subtle stuff, you know, about the forsaken and understanding Balsamon and Shamael and who was closer to the prison wall, who was released first, who, who, who was influencing the world. 
And then also, yeah, what is it that they are? I mean, she so what she gives warning here uh, that that Samael and Mogidian could destroy his body, but that the great Lord could destroy his soul. She's why is she helping him? That's I think the question you're supposed to be asking here is why is it that Lanfear is is helping um, Rand and 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 mm-hmm. not fighting back? I mean. One point she mentions when they run off and there's a, there's a Trolloc attack and I, maybe that's the next uh, chapter. I'm not, I can't remember if I got the order wrong. It or is, not, yeah, but. yeah. Then the, basically after after Rand walks out, so she's telling him all this stuff. Where basically she's like, "I want you to join me and all this stuff." And I mean, yeah. Again, I it seems to me like she has her own agenda. Yeah. Like so, I like. I mean, I think it's like she serves the Dark One, but I feel mm-hmm. like she's kind of has her own plan. Of like I, um, it almost feels like she's gonna do that kind of like join me and we can rule together, type of a thing. Like we could defeat the dark one together and then rule, and everyone would you know. That's where it feels like sh- to me she's going. Yeah. So so he, here it is. I think I think it'll just be easier to kind of read it and explain it. So um, they're talking about what the other Forsaken can do and how they can possibly kill um, Rand, but then he would just be born again. Uh, but what the dark one can do is is beyond that. And, and um, for what seemed a long time she studied him, he could almost see the scales weighing alternatives. Um, I could take you with me, she said finally. I could have you turned to the great Lord, whatever you want or believe. There are ways. So she does say, I could do those things, uh, right? She paused, perhaps to see if her words had had an effect. Sweat rolled down his back, but he kept his face straight. He would have to do something. Whether he had a chance or not, a second attempt to reach for Saeedin, uh battered vainly against the invisible barrier. So she has shielded him, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he let his eyes wander as if they were thinking. Kalendor was behind him, uh, as far out of reach as the other side of the Arth o- Ocean. His belt knife, all this kind of stuff, can't do anything about it. Uh, the shapeless lump of metal mocking him from above the fireplace, etc. So he's, he can't get to any of his weapons. Um so, yeah, the books were lying everywhere. He turned back to Lanfear, teasing. Uh, and then, you were always stubborn, she muttered. I won't take you this time. I want you to come to me of your own will, and I will have it. Uh, what is the matter? You're frowning. Here we go. A man slipped in at the door with a knife. His eyes had slid past the fellow almost without seeing. It's a gray man, buddy. Look out. These guys show up. These assassins are here. Yeah. Instinctively, he pushed Lanfear out of the way and reached for the true source. The shield blocking him vanished as he touched it, and his sword was in his hand like a red gold flame. The man rushed at him, knife held low, and pointed up for a killing stroke. Even then, it was difficult to keep his eyes on the fellow, but Rand pivoted smoothly, and the wind blows over the walls, took off the hand holding the knife, and finished driving it through the assailant's heart. So, this is interesting. So, a gray man. Rand took what felt like his first breath in hours. Um, it was always that way with the Shadows Assassins. When they were noticed, um, it was usually too late. This makes no sense. You could have killed me easily. Why distract me for a gray man to sneak up on me? Lanfear watched him warily. I make no use of the Solus. I told you, there are differences among the chosen. So right there's your answer. So you wondered, is Lanfear acting on her own? Is she her own agent? And she tells us that there are differences among the chosen. It seems I was a day late in my judgment, but there is still time for you to come with me to learn to live that sword. She all but sneered. You do not do the 10th part of what you can come with me and learn, or do you mean to try and kill me now? I loosed you to defend yourself. So, I mean, that's interesting, right? Is that Lanfear is basically saying she had his back there. I mean, she let him, she, he could have been killed. I mean, he would have had to fight that, that gray man mm-hmm. hand-to-hand combat, but instead he's able to use the, 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 you know, throws her aside. She lets the shield go, boom, realizes it's a gray man. I don't think, I mean, again, and she's saying she doesn't use the solace. So someone else ordered this attack against him. Who is that? And she's she was thinking it would be a day later, and it happens to be this day. And so you can see they're they're the chosen, the forsaken. We call them the forsaken. They call themselves the chosen. Um, are trying to get access to the most powerful channel, channeler. Yeah, turn him, turn him to the dark side. That's what they're trying yeah. to do. So yeah, 
Um, okay, well, hey, let's let's move it. Let's move right into the next thing, right? So Rand leaves, right? And so after the guy, after the gray man shows up, Rand leaves. Uh, there's dead people. As there's dead people, there's Trollocs and Fades. Okay, mm -hmm. so oh my, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Rand, um, he uh, right, he's using you know, the power rot sword, right? He's he's fight he's fighting the he's fighting the Fades, all of these things. He begins to overpower them. His blade shears uh, the Fades in two, right? So he's he's killing a Fade, he's killing the Trollocs. Um, all of these things, he's leading uh, the defenders through the stone. They're killing Shadow Spawn everywhere. There's fighting. Um, Aiel joined him along the way. At one point, he sees Moraine and Lan, and Lan gets injured, uh, but he can do nothing right because he's swamped by Trollocs. Um, so again, they're, they're they're fighting. He then he loses sight of Moraine and Lan. He notices that there's some battles going on between Man and Dark Dark friends and the stone. Um, you know, there, there's, it's basically chaos, right? He's taking on Trollocs, all of these things. Um, uh, Lanfear appears behind him and pretty much admits that the conflict, uh, between the shadow spawn is her doing. Uh, he uses the power to pin her up against the wall, but cannot remember how to shield her. She reminds Rand that he has left Kalidor in his room that, and that anyone can take it. She then breaks uh, his weaves and taunts him. He leaves her. He runs back to the room to go get Kalendor. He's hesitant to use it, but picks it up anyway. So this is where things get sick. And there's some sweet lines here between him and Moraine. A fade appears. Um, he reaches for Sadine using Kalendor. The fade turns to flee, but without even realizing he uh, he had channeled, he destroys it. Um, so uh, he then goes after the remaining shadow spawn, burning them all with the power where they stand. Uh, Ran needs to do more, something to kill all of them. He raises Kalendor and draws on the source. He has no idea what he does, but creates a spinning mass of light, and it seems like a voice in his head is telling him when to unleash it. Lightning from the mass goes shooting across the ceilings, which strike down all the shadow spawn throughout the stone. He can feel the lightning striking them down. Um, and this is where things get real cool, right? Um, uh, Moraine appears and appears and also does not know what he did. She's shocked and lost for words, but seems to think that there may be something wrong with Rand and she's keeping her distance. Rand sees a small girl dead and is so distressed that he tries to bring her back to life using Kalendor. Um, I don't, do you have the, do you have the, do you have that, those, those lines pulled up in the, in the, in the uh, book where, uh, it's yeah, just really, just it's just really cool where, yeah, where he's where he's saying like with the sword I can yeah. do anything I can yeah. yeah 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 right here so I mean basically as you say um, are you well Rand she said Rand pulled his gaze away from her right it fell on the body of that dark haired girl light she's only a child I was too late why didn't I do it sooner a child I will see that someone takes care of her Rand Moraine said gently you cannot help her now uh, his hand shook so hard on Calendor that he could barely hold on with this I can do anything his voice was harsh in his own ears. Anything. Rand, Moraine said urgently. He would not listen. The power was in him. Kalendor blazed, and he was the power. He channeled, directing flows into the child's body, searching, trying, fumbling. He lurched, or she lurched, to her feet, arms and legs unnaturally rigid and jerky. Rand, you cannot do this. Not this. Breathe. She has to breathe. The girl's chest rose and fell. Heart has to beat. Blood, already thick and dark, oozed from the wound in her chest. Live. Live, burn you. I didn't mean to be too late. Her eyes stared at him, filmed, lifeless. Tears trickled unheeded down his cheeks. She has to live. Heal her, Moraine. I don't know how. Heal her. And Moraine says, death cannot be healed, Rand. You are not the creator. Like, yeah. I mean, she's dead. She, she, the girl has yeah. died. And, and Rand thinks that he can bring her back from beyond the grave, right? My friend, there's only one thing I know of that can bring you back beyond the grave. Hey, man, let's go. <laughs> yeah. oh, no, the grave is no bar to the call of the Horn of Valir. But uh, <laughs> uh, no, I mean, it's, it's crazy, right? It's a moment for him where he was like, God, I mean, you're looking at a, an innocent. And it's, it's oh, boy, it, and... It's a moment for him where he's unhinged a little bit. He's unhinged and he thinks he can he can do anything. And uh, part of me thinks it's like, yeah, he, he, he wants to, he feels bad because he was late. But at the same time, I think he's also, there's a struggle. Moraine noticed that uh, he did something that Rand doesn't know how to do. It's one of those moments where someone else took over. And I think 
if it was the someone who we think, you know, old Loose Theron right. is, is stepping in there, uh, during his day, maybe you could do things like this. Or maybe it's it's sort of like this is something there that, that, you know, during the age of legend, there was not war and violence and conflict until that time where they bore uh, too deeply and, and, you know, came across the dark one and then war and terror and things like that uh, took the land. And so both would be struggling with it. It's not something that that they that they want to have happen. They're both good men and he feels like it's his fault and it's and this this is you know something he has to kind of fix and remedy and with Calendor he should be able to do all these things he's the chosen one right but it's not the case he cannot right. he is not the creator yeah and that is pretty much the chapter he Moraine then kind of tells he kind of tells her about Landfair and she tells him a little bit more about loose there and 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 landfair's uh relationship um and then that that's it and then they're going to decide what to do uh in, in in the morning and so yeah rand at least right now i'm guessing can't do uh everything right the shadow is rising things are getting mm. dark yeah yes they are Ah, uh, it's in this book is thick, man. It is just there's just a lot. There's a lot to cover. There's a lot of things going down. A lot of little um, tiny things, like I said, that are that are foreshadowed, and that's why I, I every once in a while try to kind of uh, breeze back through some of that stuff that's happening with the Taviran. What's happening between the nations? You know what? What was hardest for me in in my first read through, and basically that's a chapter. Just so everyone knows that's where that's the reread for today. Um, and we're just now into kind of general discussion about it because I I missed. And as I'm combing back through doing another read through of the series, you know, when you're just reading for pleasure and you're just listening in the car and you're not running before I was doing a podcast, I did not listen to this series or read the series the way that I am now. And so I am getting stuff from it now because we're having this big discussion. We're talking and people are listening and they're sending in pigeons and we're having comments on, on YouTube videos and stuff like that. You, you really do start to approach something in a different way. And you start to think about it differently and you try to kind of make sense of it all and look for the devices that the author is. That's what I'm doing. This is, again, Sir Matt's first kind of read through. So for me, as I was going through, I caught so many different things that were hints about stuff that's going to happen later between nations. You know what I mean? And it's just so small and so subtle, but it's just like, wow, the trading of grain between Tyr and Ilion and saying, no, you guys once held Barrelane prisoner. Now you're going to go ask for her permission on certain things and ask for a good, fair rate in using some of her vessels. Uh, yeah, it's just little stuff like that that is very interesting to me. And then also I get the excitement of just watching Sir Matt come across Barrelane, who is, as we said, trying to seduce our friend Rand. And then he Elaine shows up and Moraine is struggling. The Aes Sedai are trying to figure out what to do. Uh, Celine shows up. I mean, a lot is, uh, you know, that we're mentioning several Forsaken. We have a gray man attacking Trollocs, and it's just a lot. It's a lot in the first 10 chapters. So, yeah. it's awesome, though. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, absolutely. All right, as um, well, we're at about two hours. So, yeah, yeah, we're, we're pretty much done here. We just got a couple pigeons here from uh, Heather Reed and from Jonathan Reese, and uh, basically, you know, just people who are uh, some of our patrons who are commenting over on. Uh, the discussion threads, and I really appreciate that. And I did tell those folks to uh, send me their Twitter handles. I'm going to start dropping those down so folks can go follow some of our our uh, our uh, patrons who are going in and basically providing content for the show. You know, if you comment on YouTube, you comment on the Patreon feed, um, then we're going to try to read those on the show. But Heather was, was talking about how um, being excited that we are finally on the Shadow Rising. And that it's probably um her favorite of the whole series and is excited to hear sir matt's reaction to some of uh her favorite scenes the only thing i wanted to mention from this episode and this is the previous episode we're commenting on that last uh, uh part one is that the chapters and books do not necessarily go in chronological order especially as we get further along in the series and the character's point of views uh get more intricate and that's interesting you know to to keep in mind that like Right now, everything seems to be fine. Cohesively, we're moving forward. But, like, um, we've had some issues where men or others were traveling to the White Tower. We had the whole issue with the portal stones, right? Where people, it took right. them three, however many months that was, while stuff was was happening on Falma. And, you know, Leandrin was leading 
Nynaeve and Egwene away. They were yeah, they were leveling up at the tower. It was unknown as to where Rand and everyone, yeah, every, every, uh, the the company was and what was happening uh, with them. And and we, so yeah, I, I get that uh, from from Lady Heather. Um, when Min is getting to the White Tower and is talking with Suan uh, and Leanne about uh, Moraine and Rand are and what they're up to, this conversation may have happened before Tyr or at the same time. Uh, think about the fact that they all left the Mountain of Mist at the same time. Min could very well have forgotten uh, or could have gotten to Tarvalon before the group got to Tyr or about the same time. So it's just bringing up the idea that <clears throat> news is traveling, how it travels, and uh, sometimes when we're with a different character, we'll hear about things that already happened or maybe they're going to happen and they're hearing rumors. And so that's interesting for us to, as the reader to kind of you know dissect this. I do want to mention Jonathan Reese said in a previous post, one of our other uh, Sir Jonathan mentioned that um, I was a little anti-Rand, a little anti-Rand. And so next show, I want to kind of bring that up. There are some folks who are anti, uh, not anti, but, you know, they're, uh, they got some beef with some of these characters as, you know, you start off really, really liking Rand and look at how different he is by this book. I mean, he's commanding folks. You see how Egwene is sort of like acting like what you rule here. You're a ruler all of a sudden. It reminds me of that uh, little moment in, it was in one of the Harry Potter movies where like Harry is kind of telling Hermione, well, I am the chosen one. You know, what's up? Like I, I actually am the chosen one. Uh, so his, his uh, you know, and I think he has to change, right? I mean, Rand has to kind of change in, in some way, but it was interesting just to see Jonathan, uh, you know, say that. So um, uh, yeah. Oh, and he had a question really for, for right. Sir Matt. Um, Min sees a woman, you know, with it, with an Adam around uh, her neck in the White Tower. Uh, and so that was something, I don't think we talked about that. So he's saying that was something, one of those little finer details that he wanted to kind of bring up. Uh, Sir Matt, what do you think it means? Do you think the Shanchen will make it all the way to the White Tower? Well, now that you pointed out like that, yes, I do. Um, but I have, I, I have definitely thought at, at some point there will be a battle at the Tower. Um, I don't know if okay. it's this book or not, The Shadow Rising. Uh, but... Um, I, I, I do, I do think we're going to, at some point soon where we will probably get some sort of big battle. Cause I, I just feel like knowing that this is like 14 books, I feel like at some point we're going to hit a point where characters don't interact with each other for like two or three books. Yeah. Like they're going to be on their own total adventures. And like, sure. you know, I, I, I just, I don't know. It's just a feeling I like, I feel like at some point we're going to hit something where it's like, especially as I know there's so many more characters, uh, and just from everything I've I've been told about the series, like for me, I've I I think it's been like books like eight, nine, and ten is when things like really slow down. I think it's like Winter's Heart or something like right. Is that one of the no, maybe yeah. around there? It's like, like I, that's a what slog that's slog or whatever. That's what Which, people have always told me. They've said they said right. like they feel like it just slows down there. And so I I've just always kind of thought, well, what probably happens is at some point like people are like way far away from each other. So like I mean, uh, how long has it been since we've seen Loyal? Right, I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, yeah. where is he at? Right, what's yeah, so, it's, where, where and, is he at? <laughs> and so, you know that that happens, you know. So, um, yes, but I do think at some point, uh, whether it, uh, maybe it's not this book, but maybe it's uh, here, here, here in a book or two, that there probably will be a big battle in the tower, and then everything's gonna feel like oh, it's in disarray, and because yeah. I mean the the bad, guy, I mean the book's called the Shadow Rising. So, I mean, at some point, I feel like the bad guys are going to have to start winning. It's like you almost need that Empire Strikes Back, right? Right. Where the yes. bad guy, the bad guys win a little bit to to kind of propel us forward. Because I, I kept saying, I was like, Balsamon's like a joke. I mean, like, yeah, he, he's, he, like he, he, yeah. he's like a joke, right? And yeah. so now it's like, okay, well, so we're going to need we're going to need the bad guys to win a little bit. So, yeah, yes, to answer that. To, yeah. So, yes, to answer that, maybe this. Yeah. The Sun Chan probably will. Yeah. Yeah. They probably. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a good question. Um just when you see certain things around, you know, when men sees, um, well, it's kind of like the, you know, we didn't ask the question early, like who's the hawk. I mean, if we have a Falcon, who's, who's the hawk, you know, when right. she's looking at parents. So you could look at all the symbols. You could go all the way back to the eye of the world and say, well, what does this one mean? And sometimes that's what you have to do. You have to go back there and kind of say like, all right, what, what, um, you know, what, what do these mean and who do they, who do they relate to? So, yeah. 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 So, all right, guys. A long one today, but it's great. We're back in it, feeling good. Uh, yeah, and we will just continue to plow ahead here. And if we get any more show news, we'll post about it on our YouTube channel. So, 
All right, guys, with that, we want to thank you for answering the call. In our next episode, we will be discussing The Shadow Rising, chapters 11 through 20. If you like our podcast, don't forget to subscribe, like us, write a review, leave a comment, or send us a message at thehornofvalier at gmail.com. We will see you soon, and remember that the grave is no bar to our call. <laughs>